I love you guys. Dance off, bro. I have the high ground. Expecto Patronum! 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. I'm a tribe of nerds. Daisy. Two votes Moana, one vote Daisy. Third person voted out of Australian Survivor All-Stars. Daisy. Daisy, the tribe has spoken. Uh, Daisy, I hope you enjoy your blind side as much as I enjoyed mine. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tribe of Nerds. Michael, Matt, and I are going to continue our Australian Survivor coverage. Now we have built up to Australian Survivor All-Stars Season 5, where 24 of the best of the best have come to do battle with each other. Uh, that's up to your interpretation of this cast, but we'll get into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the first four seasons, talk about who made the cast, uh, whether those people deserve to make it and then talk about the snubs from each season and then we'll get into episode by episode and uh, do our player awards and the ranking. So that'll be the how we go about this. So let's start with season one, 2016. So we had five returnees from this season. We had Nick, who biggest lock on the board. Nick has to be mm -hmm. back from the original season. Uh, Lee, obviously the runner up of the season. I think he represents what that season was with the mateship and like just everything with that. And I totally would have also brought Lee back. Then you have Phoebe, the star of the pre-merge absolute lock as well. I mean, you have, you have to bring Phoebe back as well. And then flick and Brooke, which obviously their like friendship turned flick blindsiding Brooke, huge moment of the season, biggest blindside argu arguably of the season so um do you guys agree with these five being the five that came back for this season or like are any of these five people you would not have brought back you go first michael i i have some thoughts <laughs> okay I, I actually think all five that came back from the season were right to come back i i think they were all a big part of the season and especially having like the brook flick rivalry like mm -hmm. you see lee coming back with a different mindset of everything that went wrong for him at final tribal council. And then you also have Nick who was kind of a thorn and lady side at that final tribal council as well as just been a brilliant player in the season. And then like Phoebe is the original standout strategic player that we get for this version of the show really. Yeah, I uh, definitely agree. Like all five of these totally make sense. I have no problems with these five. The only problem is the person that is missing, which is Christy. And I've talked to her and her reason makes sense because she said it would be like American All-Stars where they would target the winners first. So mm -hmm. she didn't want to do that. And then which her, they did. Yeah. And yeah. then players players from her season openly told her, I will not work with you. I want you out. It's like, well, then why would I even come back? <laughs> well, I'm guessing Flick was one of those people that just yeah. openly told Christy. <laughs> yes, but yeah, Christy's the only all-star i would say that is missing like i would i would like to see craig back but yes. I, he wasn't big he, he wasn't big enough star for an all-star i get that i would have craig for me like i would have totally taken craig over zach <laughs> but we'll get to zach shortly but uh other people on the board like i'm i understand why they weren't there i just wanted to acknowledge them l i thought who was a player that also got under edited but she was playing a brilliant game uh that season as well and then magic matt i i just had a soft spot for magic matt even though like i don't think he necessarily lived up to the strategic potential he had that people had for him but like i i thought he was an interesting character on the season so um any other yeah. thoughts <laughs> I mean, Matt was the one I was rooting for in season one. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i fine with him not coming back. I'm fine with him being a one-time player. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, same. Uh, but also, can, is there a way to put like a running tally on, on the screen of how many times we diss Zach? Because I feel like we're going to get up to a high number. Okay, I, I, have some, I have some positive things to say about Zach. Yeah, it's certainly same. a better out in, in this season than it is in yes. his first season. Same. There is some growth there. 
yes, I, I will agree with that. <laughs> there is some growth, uh, but the old Zach does come out <laughs> at points. So, <laughs> all right. So that's season one. Then we have season two, 2017. We had seven people come back from this season. I'm sure this is where the variance is going to come into <laughs> play here. So we have Henry. Zen Hen has to come back as well. Huge player from season two. I don't think there's any argument with Henry. Uh, other people that aren't in argument, I don't think. Jericho, the winner of the season. I think the Cookie Monster has to be back as well. Um, and then AK, um, Obviously, just like Phoebe, a huge strategic presence in the pre-merge. And then I would say Lockie is another lock on the board as well. The big alpha male who was great in the challenges and like also a big presence on the season. So I'd say those four. And then we can argue with the other three. Jackie, uh, screwed over by Henry swapping, um, which is a storyline that didn't get anything on this season. Uh, Tarzan, who... I understand, like, he only lasted four rounds, but, like, I understand why you would bring him back, per se, because he was a character in those four episodes. Um, but, like, I just I just don't think Tarzan's cut out for the game. Um, and then we have Michelle, who I'm sure you guys might argue with. Michelle as a player, I think at least socially, she was a great talker in the game, but I'm, I'm sure that's going to get some arguing with that but um your guys thoughts on the seven people brought back from season two i liked four of them uh the uh jackie and michelle's are the are the ones i'm like really tarzan i i understand why like i personally would have brought back annalise just to uh, combat uh against ak just for yes. like the just like the memes but like the only other person from uh, 2017 that I would, I would want back is Luke, but he had just played, so right. that just makes sense. And then I, I I don't know the timeline, but I think during this time Mark and Sam were pregnant, so that may be why they weren't on this season. Right, that makes sense. Uh, Michael, your thoughts on the seven people they brought back here? Yeah, maybe I'm just being like overly nice, but again, I don't really have too many problems with the people that came back. I think. Yeah, they're not the biggest or the best players, some of them, but I think what they were trying to do, especially you also have to remember that they're doing an all-star season after only four seasons, so the pool is going to be relatively shallow of who they're going to choose from. Yes. But I, I feel like they've chosen people with stories that they can bring into all-stars, and they don't always end up coming into play, but Jackie was obviously a selection because of they knew, assuming, I'm guessing Henry got the call first, and... Jackie was pulled in because of that relationship with Henry mm -hmm. and they thought maybe that could be something there. It didn't end up happening, but you can see at least the thought process of bringing her back. And yeah, Michelle um, could be a bit frustrating, but she was like, she made it deep into the game. She was, she was a decent player and she had a good shot at it. And yeah, why not give her a second shot? Yeah, I mean, like, the whole thing uh, people like to give her credit for is getting Ben out, but also, I mean, Ben was just a really bad player in that season, so I don't I don't think we can give her as much credit. I mean, yes, she got herself from going home to at least surviving that round, but I, I just... I don't even I don't even remember who Ben is. The, like, the they called him Sideshow Bob in the season because oh. his hair. Yeah, his hair, yeah. The only thing I remember from... Uh... From him in that season is when Henry was throwing the challenge, and then at the reunion, Sam thought it was Ben who was throwing the challenge. That's the only thing I remember from because Ben was so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, and Michelle still made it to Final Four. She also, I know, her other famous moment is screwing over Sarah and Luke after they screwed her over, basically. Um, but oh yeah, Sarah should have come back. I totally forgot. Yes, Damn it. Yes. Yeah. So that was my snub. Sarah Talik from season two was yes. uh in my snub category. I don't know the story behind that. My other pick uh might have been career reasons, but Tessa from that season as well, Dr. Tessa. I think she was a really fun, scrappy underdog in that season, and she literally got taken out by a crazy three, two, two, two vote. So like that ended up like changing the game basically and getting both. Sarah and Luke taken out right after, so, and then she also got got taken out of the jury too. Which, yes, and taken which, out which, the she, jury. which she should be able to come back because of that. Yeah. Also with Sarah, I mean, 
uh, David had more than enough stories, but if Sarah comes back, there's also the connection between David and Sarah in that Model. Yeah. he was yeah. his, uh, they'd work together and she told him to go play. So um, that's something that connects them. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't know the story of why these two didn't get brought back uh, over some other people, but um, I didn't know. If I, would... The only thing I can uh, assume for Sarah is just because, She's a model, and I feel like it probably was harder on her body. But, right. You know, that's the only thing I can think of. True. Yeah, and I think Tessa might have been for job reasons. So, as I said. All right. I mean, any other snubs from season two? Or are we ready to move on? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm ready to move that. on. Yeah, I'm ready to move on, too. Okay. Season three, this one also had seven, for better or for worse. <laughs> I mean, I think biggest locks on this board... Uh, I think Sharn, big, uh, everybody thought of her. She lost in a five before vote to Shane. I mean, everybody thought of her as she possibly should have won that season. Uh, we talked about why she did not win that season. Uh, so I think she's probably a lock on this board. Matt Rogers, of course, biggest lock as well. We got to have the Godfather back. And I, I'm a huge Matt Rogers fan. So I'm excited to talk about him in this season as well. Um, and then Shawnee, I mean, obviously we know Queen Shawnee is... Uh, has to be back as well. I mean, she was a fan favorite that in, entire season three, and it's great to have her back. And she capitalized even more on like her social game to, in this season. Um, and then we have four people again who <laughs> varies. I mean, Shane Gold, I mean, they wanted another winner, so they brought Shane back. Makes sense. Um, and then you have Zach, <laughs> as we've talked about. And then you have Moana, who was sick and basically left the game early because of her getting sick. And, uh, you know, she had to get Russell Hans out. So, I mean, give her credit for something her first time. And then you have Lydia, the Olympian, who Shane screwed over. So you, and you at least get somewhat of a storyline in that first episode. But mm -hmm. um, what are your guys' thoughts on these seven? Uh, well, Zach is a surprise, especially uh, I'll talk about it during the opening moments of All Stars about why I'm even more surprised why he's there. Mm -hmm. uh, Lydia, I'm fine with being back. In fact, if you listen to the podcast that we did, uh, Jake, you said she should be back because she was a beast. So now, now you're changing your mind. Okay, uh, that's true. And then, but yeah, but everybody else like makes sense. Like Vanilla, maybe like I, I, I would have wanted back, but I, I could see like a, a Shawnee wanting to be by herself. And then, and then, uh, NPC Steve. I mean, everybody wants him back. Yeah, Commando Steve. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Michael, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they brought back one of the dullest, the most forgettable players of all time in Matt Rogers. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, <laughs> just terrible. No, um, yeah, the, the, the casting for this season is probably the strangest, like Benji, not being on the cast is probably the biggest misstep uh that would have been amazing in place of i you know what i've already forgotten who these people are but moana and uh zach yeah I, <laughs> I don't think they really should have been there um especially moana she i mean she she was barely there and then she quit yep yep i again i think they were giving her more credit for the russell move uh in that season and so they're like okay she has potential because of that I don't know, but like in terms of snubs, yeah, I mean, Benji refused to be on any other season that he was called for. So like, unfortunately, we will never get Benji again, probably, as we talked about in the season three podcast. I also had King Grubby. I had Brian on the on the list of potential snubs. I would have probably rather seen Brian rather than Zach as well, um, because at least Brian like made more of an impact on the season um so but uh yeah. Other snubs. yeah i think the only reason zach was there is because they needed somebody to go uh, against um Lockie. right but that's i mean yeah. just muscles but that's just it mm -hmm. and it would have been fun to have the continuation of the um shawnee and vanilla uh, relationship oh. if vanilla had come back in a second season and like right. who knows like shawnee's become as we talked about like she's the paul mccartney to uh Fenella's Ringo star. Um like if Fenella comes back for this season, like maybe they both end up being these social queens of Survivor Australia. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
Yeah, I mean, I didn't have Vanilla on the list, but I I totally get why Vanilla should be back if, like, we're talking about putting a pair together and seeing how well they do on a second time. But uh, any any other snubs, potentially? Not that I can think of. All right. Finally, season four, the five from this season, we, of course, have the Golden God, David, biggest lock on the board, of course. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about David. Uh, we have Johnny Isto and his Mexican Parma. Um, and, you know, I, I do love John as a character. I saw on the review that I was watching that the person, uh, the review, Moranian review, was saying how he was not that high on John going in. So um, that's a bit sad, but uh, we love John. Uh, Daisy, of course. I mean, I think obviously we're going to see how well that paid off to get her back here. Uh, as far as storylines go, we have Dirty Harry, of course. D Dirty Harry's a big lock. Uh, and then Abby, who I also think was a lock because she was a good player as well. So, I mean, I I feel like, uh, you know, we have a couple snubs, but we'll get to that. But your guys' thoughts on the season four, people? I'm, yeah, I, 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 I have no problems with, with any of these people. I yeah. wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't take any of them out. I think they all earned their place in All Stars. So it's it just becomes about like who else from that season could have been there. Um, but everyone that did make it, I think, deserved their place. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I, my only snubs. I mean, and it was going to be because career slash what happened in their in the show. I had Janine. I had Grayson Waller, and I had Ross. Uh, yeah, with Ross. Oh, yeah, Ross is yeah. That. Yeah, I don't even know if he was even able to walk by at that point. <laughs> yeah, I, so. yeah, it was pretty soon after, so I doubt he would have been recovered. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of the only ones. I mean, at the time, maybe you could have said Andy as well, but, like, you know, they they were going to save Andy for something else. So, like... Uh, <laughs> well, we could have also well. brought... We also could have brought Stephen Bradbury back. Just saying, give him a second chance. <laughs> Yep, to try to form another sporty seven. I, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Abby kind of took cues from Stephen Bradbury a little bit in this season. Yeah, she yeah. became Steve Bradbury. It was it was bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> um. Any 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 other thoughts on the season four? Uh, people coming back here. Anybody that was snubbed? No. No, I would have obviously loved to have seen Janine back, but yeah. again, it's a it's a career thing. I think she's one of the all time greats. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, that is the lineup there. Um. So let's get into the episode by episode and get more discussion going. So of course we start off episode one with probably the coolest opening ever, and just like how they divided the cast up into specific categories of like these are the biggest snakes or the biggest villains of the game. You got the challenge beasts. You got the heroes of the game. Like it was it was a really cool way that they divided people up. So I I really enjoyed that. And then the cast like meeting up together for the first time uh, uh, to see each other again was really cool. So your guys thoughts on this opening. Uh, this is my all time favorite opening of Australian uh, Survivor. But this is the first time I actually like did a deep dive into it, like each um, a category. So I noticed when they did uh, Snakes. They had one person from each season, and then Zach is the season three one. So he definitely replaced Benji. Like Benji would have been the perfect person to put right there. Oh, uh, yeah. and then and then the uh I had noticed that all of the uh, uh all the women dive into the water for something to prove because because when they say all these people have something to prove, it's like all all the women who didn't fit into a category. It's like, well, okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was Brooke, Shoney, Michelle, Sharn, yeah. Uh, but I thought Sharn was on the heroes like thing with. Oh like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah, you're right. yeah. She was a, yeah, the uh, yeah, honorable heroes. Yeah, sorry. And yeah. Lockie does a backflip into the water just because. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. Lockie. <laughs> and then okay. you have the greatest players to have ever played the game, and uh, yeah, this, this this opening, I I agree. I think it might be the greatest. It might be the greatest opening in Survivor, uh, yeah. in general. I I think it's so good. I love it, and and um. Yeah, the Matt Rogers, Henry, Phoebe, and Dave coming up onto the mountain as the greatest players and coming in separately. It, it, this was amazing. And like, I remember watching this for the first time and just being so pumped up for this season and seeing all these players back again is fantastic. Yeah. 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 I didn't I didn't know who, who was coming back before I watched the season for the first time. So when it gets to the biggest player, uh, I was like, oh shit, Henry. Godfather, Golden God, and then when Phoebe pops out, I like, I like cheered so loud. Yes, 
<laughs> yeah, I that that one was probably the best one because you genuinely felt like all four of them deserved to be in that category. So like I was really excited with that. I also found it interesting with the challenge beast. They had John there, which John yeah. I love Johnny, but he was not a challenge beast in season four. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't really have any other category to fit into. So I guess they just kind of threw him in there. Right. <laughs> Um, I personally would have put Harry over David in the in the top of the mountain yeah, thing, yeah. But yeah, that's just a personal yeah. preference. I get that, but they were gonna yeah, play. He, yeah. But he, Harry was in the snake one, so it makes plus. Plus, we got to see Nick, yeah. AK, and Harry all crawl like through the grass. So that was so good. <laughs> uh, I wish we'd gotten to uh, ask ask Harry about it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I just that just might have been must have been really fun to film. Maybe we can do a part two. Yeah. Maybe. Make it happen, Michael. But I just loved uh, when Nick is like doing his intro package and he's like, there's been way bigger snakes than me. And it's like true because there's been way bigger like strategists and way bigger, you know, uh, backstabby players than Nick. Well, so... Nick wasn't really that much of a snake. He just played the game. He was just, right. But he was, he was on a tribe where people that just would, playing the social and physical game and he was just like why why is he lying yeah, he, well, exactly. yeah but he's the og so that's why yeah 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 i don't know i mean we'll get to it i feel like nick still got branded with that by people and it was just i feel like he was a little bit screwed going in as well just because of that title but um we'll get to that um so after this awesome opening then we get to our reward challenge and this is where uh we get henry starting to play hard and where he gets the uh idol uh and he tells matt rogers that there's one on his side so um wait, wait are, are, are you sure we were able were you able to tell henry got the idol because he showed no emotion when he got it <laughs> yeah where he's just like cheering <laughs> Yeah, it's a good job no one on his tribe was looking back. <laughs> I, know, right? I, I, was, I was like, man, calm down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> before we get into this uh, reward challenge, I just want to say one thing. When everybody was hugging uh, everybody when they met, I love how AK went up to JLP and gave yes. him a, uh, a hug. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was really fun, too. Um, AK has just some great, like, super fan moments in this season that we'll talk about, I'm sure um so yeah the the idol happens and uh i believe makuta the green tribe ends up winning one of the, their only challenges in like these first what like five episodes yeah yeah also fuck this challenge this looked hard as fuck yeah, Brutal, yeah. The giant like uh platform or whatever with all the wood and everything yeah yeah and, and then thing... at... oh sorry go sorry uh, one thing i learned from this challenge from david's deep dive is that he the wood sliced his leg open and he was bleeding really badly and he got pulled by medical and they had to like stitch him up. I can't remember how many stitches he said he had. And he was in the tent having just played his f first season really recently and still being <laughs> exhausted and uh, not quite in the game. And he was adamant he was just going to leave and they had to talk him in the stain. So wow, how different a, would that, this that, season that, that, That's if, a way um, different timeline. Yeah. yeah, if the Golden God goes out in Challenge One, this season is very different. Yeah, definitely, and I, I don't even know what to think if like he's out of the game, regardless of the fact that he's our winner. But just like, I mean, Man, Zach, I mean, Zach gets his moment. Zach gets his full redemption story. <laughs> I mean, the cast, the cast immediately just downgrades, like. Yeah, David really yeah. props the season up, and um, yeah, if we lose him challenge one, it would have yeah. been. A Although cut that means that means Phoebe could have won, and I'm actually fine with the timeline now. That yeah, that's true. I mean, Phoebe yeah. would have been way better. Yeah, so. uh, Phoebe or Nick or or yeah. Harry or AK or Sean. Yeah, okay. There's a lot of people. I'm fine with the winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David was a reason for a lot of our favorites going way earlier than the show. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, so yeah, uh, then we get to camp, and like honestly, uh, like the tribe divisions. I mean, I really liked most of Makuta uh, compared to Vakama, although I liked like what happens on Vakama. But I just, I don't know. Looking at it, I'm like Nick and like Harry together, and Shoni. Like, I mean, as we'll talk about their alliance, and 
you know, seeing them together. I, I don't know. I also just really like green. So I think I'm biased because of that. <laughs> but but uh, the only thing I would say was maybe, maybe don't put uh, Tarzan, Jackie, and uh, I, I forgot who else on the same tribe because it was like a charisma vacuum. It's like yes. maybe split them, maybe split them up just a little bit. Yeah, these tribe divisions were just odd because, like, then you're also putting, to in my opinion, you're putting Michelle and Shoni on the same tribe as well. I feel like they yeah. probably should have been separated for for like evening out the tribes a little bit. And, and do and do you think they put Brooke and Flick on the same tribe for a reason? Oh, they definitely did. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then also also having like lucky david's matt like yes. all these big fit. was zach on the original no he was on Makuda. Zach was Makuda. Um, yeah but like a lot of the big physical players on the same tribe as well which seems a bit unfair and they have their contest for who's going to be the alpha male of the tribe yep yeah that was it was just a bit odd. I don't know like what the rationale was for dividing these tribes. I I honestly don't think they have a rationale because uh as we'll see with the tribe swap, uh I and like the exile twist as we'll talk about later, they clearly weren't sure what they wanted to do this season. So, um yeah, let's get to our immunity challenge. And we get, of course, probably the best immunity idol ever. We have the sword. Um, it's like an AK loves using the sword the entire season. So, um, and of course, we get the great intro shot in the uh, intro with David holding the sword. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, like a golden god, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I like to call it the reward sword. <laughs> the reward sword, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. This was the challenge where Loki um, barrels through the sticks like a lunatic. Yeah, <laughs> again, yeah, again, because he did this on his original season too. It's like, yep. it's like, yeah. man, you some caution, but he just like, he just like goes right through it. He's like Rhino in WWE, just like goring, yeah. goring that uh, bamboo. Yep, yep. So the, this is. This is a fun first challenge, and we get AK versus Lee, and somehow <laughs> Lee loses to AK in throwing a ball yeah. to the cage or whatever. Uh, and so Vak Vakuma wins this immunity, and immediately you have Matt Rogers trying to lobby to save Shane um, because it's obvious, like Shane being a winner, being the oldest player here, she is in very much like immediate danger on the Makuta tribe. Um, so I guess we can head right into Shane being the first boot. So thoughts on everything that happens here. I mean, obviously I prefer Shane going over Harry. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And, and then we get the great uh, conventional from Harry. Don't fuck with dirty Harry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this, um, this entire like pre tribal sequence is like, it's one of my favorites of the entire season where you've got Shane looking for idols, like a lunatic and Harry kind of like documenting her behavior a sweet and grandma we, we, yeah we learned that shane has been studying gorillas to come into this season oh yeah did we want um, to talk about her chimpanzee yeah, politics they, they, yeah and then that so montage good. of everybody looking like one yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's shane, interesting shane wasn't in the season long but she she really was memorable and there's the amazing scene where um Harry slightly ahead of Shane when she, they're with Henry, and she points to the back of Harry's yeah. head as if he's going to execute him. Um, and it's like, I'm coming for you. And it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a really good dynamic. Unfortunately, it means going into the first travel, you know, it's either going to be a winner going or one of the most popular players going. So it, it was kind of lose lose. But yeah, I think out of the two, I'm very glad Harry stayed. Yep, yep, and and Lydia gets her revenge on Shane. So I mean, that's like her one storyline this season. <laughs> so I thought, it was, I thought it was very funny as well that Harry's first tribal council in this season and in his first season was a, a player kind of pushing Harry to the to the front to be the person driving the vote. Mm -hmm. um, and he did that with the law vote in Champs vs Contenders too. And then yes. yeah, Lydia kind of weaponizes Harry. He's like go do your thing and get Shane out for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's unfortunate here. This is like the Tina West vote in US All-Stars. Um, but I think the difference is that Tina is still a great player. I mean, Shane won, so I can't really say she's a bad player. She's good, but like, 
I, I don't know. I'm just not I'm not super into Shane Gold as a survivor yeah. player. So Same. I don't think she was ever gonna have a long run in this no. second season. No, I think her only chance would have been if she got put on the initial tribe with Matt Rogers. And like he yeah. could have maybe saved her, possibly. But um this is also where Henry finds the uh idol behind like the tribal council. So um you know this is uh it would have been crazier if he actually like you know found it in the middle of tribal but i mean we're gonna see yeah. <laughs> and try to do that with a fake later but yeah <laughs> um any other thoughts on episode one i just have two these are both uh conventionals one is shawnee's voting for shane i already gave you half a million dollars last time i think that's generous enough of me and yes. i'm like yes you are back and then uh shane's uh actually conventional at this stage i'm still half a million dollars richer than they are it's like yeah that's <laughs> like fuck them and she not really being able to she doesn't grab her torch and she doesn't even know what she's doing it's like i've never been voted out before yeah i've never done this before and then everyone yeah. does. exactly so it was a solid first episode i'm glad with the result so all right. Well, episode two, we're going to lose our other winner in Jericho. But so we get to uh, I think this is where Nick calls Shoney a spirit animal. Yep. That that's my first note. It's one of my favorite quotes. And I agree. Like she is. Yep. She is my spirit, a survivor spirit animal. Yeah, because she like talks about how she just randomly went up to strangers and like took care of their dogs or whatever. <laughs> and then she got a good job. And then she got a job was, as a nanny. <laughs> she was in an Uber. And she stopped the car to get out of her taxi to tell someone that their dog was cute and she ended up getting a job with them. It's like, and like Nick says, it's the most shiny story that there ever was. It just, yeah, yeah she's and, fantastic. And, and yeah, she said that happened in the UK. So is that true, Michael? Does that happen a lot where if you just like point to dogs and you just get out, you, you can get jobs? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't have a paid career. I just kind of wander around looking for dogs. That's all okay. we do. It's so and then this is where we get the formation of the little, the little rascals right with harry nick and shoney yeah. so um this is a great alliance i wish we actually got to see it for much longer in the game um yeah. but i you know it's great that this even formed at all the original spice girls yes the original spice <laughs> girls <laughs> um so then we get to our reward challenge which is basically the challenge from china where they're throwing each other off the boat or the platform mm -hmm. and so oh, wow i didn't even realize that but yeah you're right wow yep yep this is the james clement challenge of just taking people and chucking and them then, and then two and then in each one somebody got naked yeah wow. <laughs> yep <laughs> Yeah, this might be the sexiest episode of Survivor there ever was. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they. Were, yeah, like like Abby, she, she, like working, like, um, yeah, twerking yes. in Phoebe's face, yeah. fist on her face. Yeah, for like a few minutes. Yeah, I I feel bad for Phoebe as well. Just like she took yeah. so much physical like strain yeah. on her that entire challenge. I don't know if this is true, but the rumor is apparently she like injured her spine during this challenge, so she was in it, so she was hurt for the rest of the game. I don't know if that's true. If we ever get to talk to her, then we should then we should ask her that. Yeah, that would be nice to know. Yeah, and she took so much, so I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. That's it's just sad. In another in in another physical chance later on as well, she's like, she really puts up full effort in, in the um, like tug of war challenge that they had. Yeah. She was another part of that. So yeah, she Phoebe gave her all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is really, we're actually getting to see her in a physical type of challenge. We didn't get to see those as much in season one, really. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, then the immunity challenge, this is one with like the, the bean bags as well, right? um they have to like land the bean bags on the barrels um so oh, yeah. vakama loses this challenge and so we basically see that there's these two sides um which is you know david Lockie, uh ak uh brooke flick bb and daisy right well at, as ak called it the young attractive group yes ak called it that so plus, plus yeah. him <laughs> yes yeah, plus and him. and we get the um, the amazing thing from David where he's like, I'm part of the young attractive group for this, like, but I'm 35. I'm 39. And I'm, I'm, like, the, hey. I'm 39. He said he's 30, yes. 39. He was 39. Yeah. I was like, God, man. Yeah, yeah. 
David and looks I, great. I, well, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that's why he's a international model, Jake. Right, right, true. I made a note that he was the physical representation of that how do you do fellow kids meme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So then the other five are Matt Rogers leading uh, Moana, Tarzan, Jackie, and Jericho is in that alliance. And so basically they're thinking of going for Moana because she sucked in the challenge, which is surprising because she's also an athlete um but she also sucked in all the challenges in the in her first season so there could be a theme here yeah yeah which is just interesting and then david throws out jericho instead as the option because he's the biggest threat uh because he's won the game and i've heard supposedly that jericho like david wanted to work with jericho because of luke and jericho flat out refused to work with him so that's why david wanted jericho out which is like bad on jericho if like he really did refuse david um i just i i don't know why he would but like i guess that makes more sense of why david immediately wanted the other winner out of the game um at that point but uh yeah i I do remember David talking about that on his next interview, and I, I can't remember the reason Jericho gave, but yeah, it, it makes no sense, especially the position Jericho is in yeah. and the target that's on his back. Why he would not want to work with anyone that was willing to work with him is is mad. So exactly. yeah, it makes sense for David. Yeah, and like I'm just interested as well of like um, – like Phoebe and AK potentially want to like work with Jericho, but they're like, no, we're we're gonna go with our alliance and just take Jericho out. So I know like that was something that they were thinking about of like potentially uh, keeping Jericho in the game there. But this is where we also get uh, Phoebe and Lockie going to the reward yes, where they yeah. get the cookies. Yes. That would be the crux of the alliance, yeah. the cookie yeah. alliance. I love the kind of the lucky things that happen sometimes where they get a jar of cookies and it ends up being the thing that's used to take out Jericho. Yeah. Obviously yeah. It was Jericho's crux to his season. Um, so yeah, there's a cookie. nice symmetry there. Yep. Yeah. Not a single cookie. <laughs> yep. Uh, and we'll get them using that reward ticket uh, later on. But uh, any other thoughts on episode two with Jericho leaving the game? Nope. Um, Jericho's... Uh, performance at tribal council yes. is fantastic and he has this big emotional moment and you just see david just staring right through him and doesn't believe a second of it and, and, he, and it gold. Confessional. yeah gold jerry gold <laughs> um yeah so uh yeah jericho's gone so both our winners are out of the game um and we get to probably the best episode of the season of course we get to episode three the Daisy Blindside. So I'm sure we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this here. Um, yeah. So where do you guys where do you guys want to start with this? So the episode it it starts pretty early with David approaching Matt with this idea. Yes. And honestly, it it's such a good idea. And in David's game, it has some issues in terms of entertainment because it's very predictable as a viewer. But like this is the start of David showing that David has so honed his game from his original season. And this idea is just fantastic. And this big physical player that's on the opposite side of your alliance, that you work together and you have access to both alliance information, you kind of knock off uh, people from underneath. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. Yes. I don't think we could have predicted how brilliant it would be, but it, um, yeah. yeah, as an idea, it's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, amazing, amazing idea. More people should, should do this. Do do uh, uh, cross the lines deals? Yeah, well, and like to have it be the two arguably biggest threats left on that tribe, like working together, it just makes the most sense. Like they can get as much information as they need from each other, and like they can both protect each other, cover each other because people are going to be coming for them later. Like it just makes a lot of sense for both their games to work together. I wish we got to see more of this alliance later on, but the swap does not, you know, work in Matt's favor, unfortunately. Um, and I, I think it's, um, it's such a good read on David's part that he's, he's happy to be in a majority, but you don't want to be in too big a majority because right. he is always going to be a big threat. So if your majority is too big and they can start looking at you and saying, maybe we can afford to lose David at this point, we still have the majority. So to keep your majority solid, but not too big, uh, it's just a, 
it's brilliant by David. Really, really good. Yep, yep, for sure. And I found this interesting as well last episode that Matt's uh, alliance voted for Daisy the last round. So I found it interesting, like going into you know that this night talk as well like david wants daisy out for past ills uh which we need to bring up david literally told everybody he's there for revenge yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. just flat out <laughs> i don't know why maybe people... yeah maybe daisy should have been a bit more worried <laughs> <laughs> but, but just like it's interesting that like Matt, like they voted for Daisy the last round and like to, you know, wonder why they're voting Daisy again. And like, you know, I, I thought that was interesting to to bring up there. But um yeah. and what you said on um David saying past ills, I think it's such a small thing, but it sums up why David is one of just the most entertaining characters in Survivor history. It's like everything he does is so performative and he doesn't say like, oh, she voted me out in my season. It's so it's almost like Shakespearean. It's yeah. it's it's so dramatic. It's it's brilliant. Past ills. Yep. Yep. With the little smile and the laugh. It's so good. Um, so yeah, this uh we get to the challenges. Uh anything of note for the challenges here. Um I'm trying uh, to just just say I hate the Samiri challenge, uh, where you have to push the two balls in the mud. It's like that's just so much work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the yeah the the challenge, uh, with the balls. This is what was in China as well. So we're getting a lot of China references today. Well, uh, it was also, it was also in Philippines where they just had to call it a, a draw. Right. Right. Yep. And this is also where Henry gives his idol that is good only through these first three rounds to Matt. So, so yep. this is going to. So interestingly enough, I wish they made this a bigger deal on the show. This ends up saving Jackie. So in a way, Henry saves Jackie this time after screwing her That's over. True. Yeah. <laughs> so Good point. yeah. So it's it's really interesting here. So obviously this is gonna lead to a lot of chaos. And so this leads to before tribal council that David is gonna give Matt who they're voting the majority is voting for, so Matt can play the idol correctly. And then the minority is gonna vote Daisy. Mm -hmm. This gets blown yeah. up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets blown up because Brooke finds the idol. And yes. then David's like, well, shit. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So this is bad for me. So I want to make it so that Matt will call me out and throw me under the bus so that Brooke will play her idol for me. And then that's another idol out of circulation. Yeah. So the fact he, that... he, he, oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say he has one of the best confessionals where it's like, I want that idol out of the game so then I can find it. Yes, exactly. What he does. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um... So an, another little uh, bit from David's deep dive was when he told Matt about the Brooke issue and that he had to put his name out there. Matt just didn't do it. I don't know if Matt was still a bit concerned over, over whether David was honest or whether he was playing him. So he had to go back to Matt two or three times and be like, I'm not hearing my name. You need to put my name out there. So he really had to hammer it into Matt that like, you need to say my name because I'm going to get Brooke to play my idol, uh, her idol for me. Yeah. So that was something I picked up on the deep dive. That's crazy. Honestly. So yeah, this, this tribal council happens. And so you get Matt performing as well and you get him calling out David. And then uh, obviously, you know, David tells him to play his idol for Jackie. And so I guess they also throw two votes at Moana, which isn't going to matter. But uh, so, of course, this is the great blind side. So uh, Matt plays his idol for Jackie, says, you know, would you do that for any of your guys? And so then Brooke plays her idol for David as he planned. And then you get Daisy name coming up and you have the great David reaction. <laughs> yes. In fact, in fact, Michael, can you recreate that for us right now? Can you do the David reaction? I can try. OK. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty good that's that pretty good was, i got the jacket i got the colorful shirt yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah well works. not a scarf but um so like th this move is just there's so many moving parts it, it's yes. so brilliant and and up until um a season we'll discuss later i had this as my favorite tribal council of all time yeah. um yeah no notes fantastic yeah. Yeah, this is to me, this is the apex of the season. Like this is the high point 
and then it never gets up to here ever again right sadly i and you know we'll give david a lot of credit throughout this still uh even after this but just like yeah it's it's really the biggest part of the season um not nothing compares and like michael said i feel like until heroes versus villains which we'll get to later this is the best tribal council in australian survivor history and yeah. honestly in any survivor uh it's one of the biggest so uh, i don't know i mean q in season 46 oh god no <laughs> you keep That's referencing a season i've not watched yeah well according to jake you don't need to but i think it's i think it's fun I think it is the gabona of the new era but jake disagrees so I don't think it's a good season, but um, all right. Anything else to say about this fantastic episode? Uh, yeah, I I wrote down that Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, Daisy getting voted out. It's like the Simpsons. You can actually see the moment with her heart breaks. Heart breaks. Yeah. Yeah, with Ralph, Ralph Wiggum. <laughs> that was my last note. Yeah, anything? No, I got nothing. I mean, that's a great way to to end this episode yeah Sim- Simpsons and Seinfeld this is this is this is great yeah yeah all right so then we get to episode four. Oh, I didn't want to say with Daisy also she did beat Lydia in a physical challenge which was interesting <laughs> so um but anyway let's move on to episode four uh this is this has the uh funny interaction in the crate pushing challenge where we have harry versus tarzan and harry's like i'm hungry man and tarzan's like why don't you chew on this <laughs> i wrote that down word for word it's so that is one of the funniest cheesiest corniest reaction or interactions i've ever seen on the show yeah it's it's brilliant because Harry's looking so like determined and and trying his best, and and Tarzan's just not moving. He's just kind of <laughs> resting on the on the box, like <laughs> like it's a water cooler. He's just hanging out at work. Yep, and Zach's still being cocky. <laughs> oh, God. You know he's going yeah. to beat Jackie. Um, he does this weird like little step back, step forward. It's so yeah. pantomime. It's silly. Yeah. Yep. So that challenge happens, and we also uh, obviously should mention everything with, like, Abby basically is heading the sports alliance or, like, the physical players, which, I mean, it's crazy how she kind of adopts the Stephen Bradbury game here of doing what he did and just forming a group of people just based on, okay, we're all athletic or physical players, we should just work together which I understand, like, you want to keep other threats around you, at least physically, and be able to win challenges. But, like, because of how divided you are, I mean, really, you're still losing challenges regardless for the most part. I, I, I made a note when it came to Abby that I was going to bring up later, but might as well just say it here, that I think Abby is the kind of player that needs a Luke or a Janine or a Pia that yeah. really kind of held her game together and, like, push the direction of things um when she doesn't have that and it's just her doing it by herself um she doesn't really have those chops i think yeah having those kind of players like luke jenny and pay really kept abby on track and got it way further in the game absolutely yeah so so kind of like jt in in the u.s he did have uh fish back on the two seasons pretty much and then he just kind of he just kind of blew up yep yep well, speaking of blowing up, Henry's game starts to blow up and AK literally calls AK out at the challenge or AK ch- calls Henry out at the challenge uh, yeah. for giving the idol to Matt. And this is where everything just starts exploding for Henry. And you have Nick basically, which I believe Nick and Henry like knew each other more outside the game. And Nick just doesn't want to trust Henry anymore and basically is doing everything to get Henry out now, um, which like regardless, I mean, is this a great move for Nick? I mean, because I understand it, absolutely what Nick's thinking. You don't want to keep someone in the game who's absolutely like doing wild, crazy things for just to make moves. And um, so, so I totally get uh, getting rid of a wild card, but it's also like the way Nick is pushing this. I, you know, I don't know if he should have because I know he was trying to play like a little more low key and social uh, up to this point. He's, push- he's pushing it to the wrong people. Yes, the issue. He's he's pushing it to the sporty physical people that we need to get rid of Henry, who are just never going to go for that. 
Right. Um, but I, I think Nick's read on Henry as a player is spot on. It, yes. It's not something they um, they wanted around. And it was chaotic and it was damaging to their group. Um, yeah, Henry, I feel like Hen- Henry was great in his first season and he's kind of, Harry mentioned being the uh, TV product in his interview and kind of playing up to that. Yeah, um, I feel like Henry was kind of that player. So coming into All Stars, I think he just wanted to play that TV product game and just play hard. But it was all just too much too soon, and he, mm. he completely just destroyed any chance he had in the game. Yeah, yeah, it, it's unfortunate because I'm a, I'm also a big Henry fan uh, in season two. So I was like really pulling for him to make it through like this early game, but he just wasn't able to do that. Um, and I mean, he could have possibly had he made it to the swap, but, um, just Makuta kept losing. Um, but this is the barrel challenge now where they have to hold up barrels. So a big physical endurance challenge early on. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of this challenge because it's like a group endurance challenge and I always like group endurance challenges. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then this is where, uh, Shawnee misses the advantage under the bench. Yeah. Oh, did we also mention Tarzan tried to look for one earlier, too? <laughs> no, I, I didn't mention that. Uh, but uh, one thing that we forgot to mention was at the reward challenge. So Vakma wins, and then Matt just finds the idol in front of everybody. Yes, yeah. This is yeah. where, like, Lockie's literally looking at him, and Matt just goes down, picks it up, and Lockie's yeah. really frustrated. And I love when Lockie, in both his seasons, where he gets pissed off, like, AK or Matt, and he's just, like, in his confessional, he's like, I hate that someone just, like, beat me to something or is, like, outwitting me in this game, and it's really yeah. funny. He's clearly such, like, a competitive person, Um so yeah, he just gets so frustrated quite easily, and just I just love Matt Rogers. I, he's yeah. he's so good, and he just has the biggest shit eating grin on his face when he finds this idol. Yeah, yeah. Like yep. like, and, and he even says to Jackie, like, "Hey, one and four again. Let's <laughs> let's do it again." Yeah, I and, yeah, I'm a huge Matt Rogers fan too. So. Yeah, like he's he's not around for long term in the season but he but more than he, he, yeah, but, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah he shined really bright for for as long as he could yeah the candle that shines what is it the candle that yeah. burns twice as bright burns half as long or something like that sure sure <laughs> we'll go with that sure that's sounds a, great sound, it, sounds great it's I've, heard say, Runner. I've heard this uh, uh i i know what you're saying yes i i think that's right yeah Matt, it's a Blade Runner reference, and do you know who would have appreciated it? Eden. Eden, yeah. Well, he would have appreciated all the Simpsons and Seinfeld jokes that we've been doing, so. <laughs> I mean, we can mention it more uh, at some point, but um, <laughs> all right. So uh, this is where Michelle uh, sucks in the challenge, so she becomes like an instant target at this tribal council, and Nick wants to also split votes on Henry, which, I mean, is probably not great to, like, freak Henry out more in hindsight. Like, this is probably a, a bad decision again. As we said, he's also mentioning it to the wrong people. But, um, yeah, so Michelle goes out here, uh, and, you know, I... You know, as I said, like Michelle gets credit for like being more social player, but I mean, she just did not stand a chance of getting far at yeah. all this season. And I'm, oh, I'm okay losing her. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy that she didn't last longer because we we got to focus on more more like flamboyant people like Zach and Moana and Jackie. So <laughs> we also in the, in the um jumping back slightly, there's a clue on the sit out bench that Shawnee doesn't see mm-hmm. in this challenge as well it's so frustrating where she's like looking yeah. the camera keeps panning to this um clue and then i guess i suppose it doesn't really matter because shawnee ends up fighting it anyway right yeah right worked out in the longer the only other thing i have for this episode is it starts off with Lockie knows there's a rat in the alliance so he confides in david yeah, there, there's a rumor going around that like they knew David was the rat, but also oh. I just don't I don't know that that's true because I mean we never got to see them lose again, and I think David played it off so well that I think they're probably just saying that post season to make yeah. him look better. They also yeah. just reminded me David's conventional rat is such a dirty term. I, <laughs> I prefer the term informant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do love David's confessionals. We're going to talk about more. Of them, oh, I have but... so many. I have so many of his <laughs> in my notes. Oh, I'm totally going to be like 
his movie confessionals that we'll yeah. get as we go through. I mean, that's stuff that I did in my Vanquish season where I'd just do like Emperor Palpatine and Green Goblin quotes <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, and t- until we uh, meet a certain cockroach from Bankstown, um, like yeah. David is just the confessional king. Yes. He's t- he-, he puts so much into it and is so entertaining. And as we'll discuss as we get through this season, thank God for that because it, it really does help prop up some of the more um, lackluster episodes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so episode five so this is the death of henry uh in survivor and this episode is uh probably one of my favorites as well actually because i mean you get basically henry knowing that he's gonna go home next but the fact of like he's almost able to turn it around a little bit um thank god he doesn't because we'd lose shoney otherwise if that was the case but like uh this is just a fantastic like last episode for henry like we get to the reward challenge and it's literally the one where like they're it's down to the last point and like it's henry versus david and henry like yeah, almost loses the... he, yeah and he bottles yeah. up and he still knocks off it's yeah. like god damn that's impressive yeah that was and like and his whole goal there was to try to impress the rest of his team so they'd be more open to keeping him in the game yeah um which the, there's a moment there's a moment where he's bouncing it and he, he knocks yeah. David's off and David's yeah. kind of like looking at Jonathan like is that <laughs> allowed like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it was good and just like and the whole team being super excited like it, it was just a really good moment um and then and we the, got... it, oh and then on the reward this is where Lockie and Phoebe use their yes. uh coupon to cash in for the ice cream for Harry Harry, Harry wins ice cream yeah 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 that's good for Harry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then uh this is where Shoni finds her idol in the well, and you have Nick jumping around <laughs> and her being like, Nick looks so cute in his little short shorts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, N- Nick's excitable reaction is just the best. And then like him trying to like put some water on the well around the ground to cover it up Mm -hmm. and yeah the little rascals alliance is just one of my all-time favorites i i wish we got to see more of it so bad um so yeah this then we get the immunity challenge and vakama wins again um and uh my note for this challenge is a jlp uh, quote hard to get a grip on your log when it's wet and slippery (laughs) there's gonna be a few yeah yeah there's a lot you need to point us out when we're getting to the quote about Locky because that one is the best one. <laughs> oh, I think that's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. So so then we get to tr- back from tribal council, and so Henry appeals to the sports people that we need to take out Shawnee, and then you know Shawnee knows that she is on the chopping block, so she knows she needs to play her idol. So we get to tribal, and it would have been a tie, uh, but. Uh, she plays her idol successfully, but this is also where Henry has the fake idol that he's going to plan to pretend to find yeah. at Tribal Council, and Nick calls him out on it. Yeah, I mean, impressive yeah. move by Nick, because, like, yeah. this this is a, this would have been the first time in Australian Survivor where there was an idol at Tribal Council, so that's, like, a bold yeah. move by Nick. By like, oh, he he had just planted that. Yeah. 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 I, so, I think, you know, Hen- Henry did everything that he could do and it very nearly worked it, it's a situation that he shouldn't have been in um you know if, if right. he didn't play the way he did up to that point but i do kind of like that henry went out in bombastic fashion uh you know fake idols and um yeah he just unfortunately for him shawnee found an idol so it was kind of checkmate at that point and yeah. kind of for the drama of the episode we all knew shawnee had an idol so it was yeah. kind of like we couldn't really buy into Henry's plan all that much. It was obvious he was going to be going. Right. And then she has a great quote uh, when she pulls out hers where she's like, if you're this real, you better get it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I, you know, I, again, I didn't want to lose either one, but I guess I'd prefer to lose Henry out of the two. So, like, that happens at least. But yeah. So, this, this is probably the first, like, like loss I felt of somebody being voted out. The yes. first four, I was like, I was like, eh, like eh, it's fine. Right. This one, like, I actually hurt. Yeah. And, like, it's just like Henry was such a big presence. And so, like, it sucks to lose him this early, especially when we have people that we'll be talking about that don't do much for the season. So, yeah. 
he did so much in five episodes <laughs> All right, so goodbye, Henry. And this is where we get our first non-elimination in episode six. And this is where Makuto loses yet again. I know John has his panic attack here um, in the water. And so um, this is where, yeah, Makuto goes to tribal. And I guess this is where uh, Zach flips on the sports people as well, um, or attempts to, and they're going to try to blindside John. But uh, it's on the show, it appears that Nick uh, throws that plan away to go for Zach instead. And I did hear that apparently uh, the show edited it out, but Sharn dropped out of the plan. So Nick switched it okay. to that. Because oh, yeah, to, okay. to keep Sean safe, yep, I have that. Because yeah. I actually have some notes. I said I was going to speak somewhat positively about Zach here. I actually really did feel bad for Zach here because he does acknowledge his mistakes yeah. in his first season and he he wants to try and play it different and this is the first time we ever see him really try a, to make a move that isn't just based on you know muscle and uh, going back slightly there's a fantastic uh, confessional from shawnee where she calls her tribe a lame pile of muscle <laughs> um but this is the first time Zach's like really trying to play the game get involved strategically and he, and he has this relationship with harry that he's been building and it's a decent plan, and unfortunately, Nick just throws him to the wolves completely. And yeah, I, I did feel bad for him, and I think maybe if they made that move with Zach, like he would have been a good ally for them. Yeah, again, if Sharn didn't drop out of the plan, but Sharn yeah. is yeah a lot of plans. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Sha yeah, I, I have bad things to say about Sharn during the season. So it's like Zach was Zach was trying to redeem himself, and Sharn just kept digging in her hole even bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we get find out that this is the first non-elimination twist of the season, and this is where the two highest vote getters will both go to exile, and Shawnee and Zach get the most votes, uh, even through uh, Zach's attempt to get rid of John. And so they, yeah, they go to exile. Any other thoughts yeah. on this episode? Uh, just like the points in whose line uh, is it anyway? This doesn't matter because none of them go home. This twist was stupid. Yeah. Yeah, the, this really means nothing. So I I remember thinking, oh, I wonder if Shani can like beat Zach at a challenge. That's going to be yeah. interesting. But yeah, nope, nope. they're just fine. Yep, they're yeah. fine. That that sh it should have been a challenge. Uh, the, yes. The, yeah. The, I, um... It completely. It it's it's. I don't understand it. It's it's yeah. one of the most like confused and non eliminations because there's absolutely no payoff. So this entire episode is pointless. Nothing yeah. happens, and they both just come back into the game because it's tribe swap next episode anyway. So they would have been swapped up regardless. Yeah, it's, it's no, literally just. Yeah, nothing. I don't know what they were thinking. Like this is a production thing. I, I, I wish we could talk to those producers because that's just like, what, what, why? I mean, just maybe to keep people safe for longer. I mean, to keep more stars in the game, but it's just stupid. Yeah. Well, because, like, if there was an actual elimination here, I guess because the majority would have been on Zach. So Zach goes here, I think. Um, and then we would have been down to 18. So they would have an even 9 9 swap. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it, it makes no sense. Yeah. So <laughs> episode seven, then we get the swap. And this is where Zach uh, is predetermined to go to Makuta and Shoni mm -hmm. is predetermined to go to Vakama, giving them 10. Uh, yeah. to who does not? And then Matt gets screwed. Yes, Matt gets swap screwed. As yeah. somebody whose name is Matt and has been swap screwed, I know this feeling. Yeah, it's it's not a fun feeling to just like lose all your allies to the other tribe and then just like know you're in a doomed situation yeah. when you lose. So, I mean, he loses everybody, like even yes. his fake ally and david that no one knew about like literally everybody it it was a disaster for matt yeah luckily he had an idol so he, he could i don't know at least have some hope that maybe he could get yeah. himself out of it but yeah disaster for matt well and just like to get swapped with locky and brooke who are like a really tight power couple and ak's with them and so like and then you have abby's alliance as well so you're basically stuck with like two power alliances and you know it's it just is a sucky situation for matt and so like i wish that i wish that we would have gotten to see more of matt and david but i guess we'll talk about that in a few episodes but 
Um, yeah, but this is where uh, the new Vakama <laughs> begins their losing streak. And this is where we are going to lose Abby because Shawnee gets her revenge. And so Abby is the sixth all-star to go. So any other thoughts on Abby? Yeah, really. I, I honestly... Oh. Sorry, I, I honestly feel like really bad for Abby in this because it's it yeah. it's absolute bullshit. I'd be, I'd be completely furious if I was Abby. Mm -hmm. Shawnee was voted out of the game, and as a, as a fan, like you're pleased because Shawnee's fantastic, but like they voted her out, and they just she just comes right back in. She gets put back on the tribe that the person that blindsided her is on. Um, and has the ability to tip them against her. Um, like, her game just gets completely destroyed. We're talking about Matt Rogers getting screwed. Like, Abby got screwed. Mm. Like, th yeah. this was terrible for Abby. Right. Well, and of course, Brooke and Lockie and AK are going to take the opportunity to take out a power player in Abby right now while they can. Yeah. So it, it definitely sucks for her, uh, especially because Abby was doing really well in, like, all these challenges as well. So... Um, any other thoughts? Uh, just on this episode, this is where the Pandora's box happens yes. and, Nick, and Nick finds the key and gets the extra vote. This this was a cool twist. I mean, I, I think it should have probably been a steal of vote over an, just an extra vote. But like, I, I liked this twist. Um, Just getting to like, see you could be the first to open the box and undo the lock and like, and it was what, Nick or Jackie? And so like, obviously we won. We should have won out. Like we we got Nick getting it over someone like Jackie, who just was a dud on this season. <laughs> yeah, and we get the um, we get Nick and Phoebe having a season one reunion where yes. Nick tells Phoebe about the key, and we get that relationship starting to build back up. Right. Yeah, I love seeing them together. I mean, I guess they never really had a relationship within the season itself. It's all been like yeah. after their season where they became friends. So like it's it's great to see them together here. And uh, I, I would have liked to see them go a lot farther together as well, because Phoebe could have joined up with the Little Rascals and that would have been fantastic. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh my God. That's, that's 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 like my perfect alliance right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I feel like Phoebe really fits into that group. She would have been good in that. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we lose Abby. Then we get to episode 8, and this is the challenge where one person from each tribe is going to win immunity, and both tribes are going to go to tribal. Uh, and uh, Brooke wins for Vakama, right? And then... Mm -hmm. and the Jackie. Jackie. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So then we get to tribal and they find out they're voting someone out, but those two people will go to fire against each other. And so this is where Moana gets the blind side on Phoebe and then, uh, which David does not know about this one. And then the uh, Vakamas, they continue to pick off the a Abby's Alliance. And so they get rid of Lydia. So then it's Lydia versus Phoebe. And thankfully Lydia loses fire. So <laughs> yeah. Any any thoughts on Lydia or the rest of this episode? Um, the, it's right at the beginning of the episode. There's a brilliant moment where Nick cosplays as David. He yes. has like the hat yeah. and the scarf on, and he, he seems to really upset David. Where <laughs> Dave, David says, "Where did you get this look?" And Nick just says, "Ah, oh, you know, some chump." And David just <laughs> like, like, "I'm the man, whatever, guy. yeah, whatever." It's so cool. And that was we also get we also get the line. Um, it's outwit, outwit, outplay, outlast, not outwit, outplay, outspoon, uh, in reference yeah. to Lucky and um, Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. God. Uh, well, any thoughts on Lydia? I mean, I did say she was she was a challenge beast, deserved to return for that reason. But I mean, I don't think we're gonna get anything else out of Lydia as a player. Yeah. Um, no. so I'm cool with her going at this point. <laughs> I have nothing on Lydia, but my other note on this episode was um, Mo. This is when Mo and David start to build that relationship, yes. and Mo says to David, um, "I can be your Luke," and I reacted with, "How dare you stand where he stood? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are not Luke Toki." Yeah, Moana. I mean, we can start talking about her game and just like I'm not a Moana fan. She's probably one of my least favorites on the season. So sadly, I'm gonna have to suffer through her the rest of the season. Um, but I just, I just think she 
thinks she's better than she is in terms of like socially. Yeah, she has the strategy, but I just don't, I, she doesn't, I don't think she likes to talk to a lot of these people and like, she doesn't care and kind of just like, she just speaks in a very monotone voice as well. So it's very hard to like sit there and be like, oh, Moana's making these moves because you just don't care about her. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the, there's several examples of players saying that like Moana doesn't talk at camp and she just kind of lies there. And and yeah, she she takes credit for a lot that isn't really her. There's a horrible one that really <laughs> frustrates me where she like turns to the jury and like does a mic drop. It was like, you didn't yeah. do this. Yeah, I, yeah, I have that come up later, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I don't, she's so cocky. And I believe Nick said postseason that like when Moana kept trying to take credit for stuff, Nick said postseason, like nobody actually like, like they they knew Moana wasn't controlling anything and like they you know they had, yeah. they weren't believing anything she said. <laughs> but like I do believe that the path for Moana to win, uh, but she yeah. needs to start, you know, making moves to take out there. But you can't like going yeah. that deep with them is it was just hopeless. But um, my last note on this episode um, isn't to do with Lydia again. I feel like this is two podcasts in a row where Lydia's been on where I, none of my notes have been about Lydia. Sorry, Lydia. Um, that just prays for Phoebe. Um, you know, she gets blindsided in, you know, pretty horrible fashion and she goes into this fire making challenge and, um, yeah, and takes out the challenge beast. And yes, David's very happy for her, which will turn sour quite quickly, sadly. <laughs> um, yeah, and she, I think Phoebe says it was for her dad, like her dad gave her a lot of inspiration for yeah. this, it's pretty cool. So that was like a big emotional moment for her. I really liked that. I was very happy Phoebe stayed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, all right. Any other thoughts on this episode? Were you ready to move on? Let's go to the next one. I got some notes on this. All one. good. All right. So this is episode nine. This is the auction episode. This is where Phoebe is pissed off at the rest of her tribe, rightfully so. And she, uh, the tribe can like spend all their tribe's money on stuff if they want. So she <laughs> puts $500 on things and just pisses off like Moana and Jackie and Tarzan, uh, which is really funny. Um, and then like her and AK have a really good uh, conversation as well. So that was, that was really cool. Um, but any thoughts on the auction part of this episode? Uh, is that yeah. just uh, John misses out on the Mexican Parma? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Mexican. Well, I I have a no further on this because it's it's my favorite John moment of the season where he's already bid on a pizza <laughs> and then he continues to bid on the Parma and Lucky's like, "Are you serious?" and he's like, oh, "Bugger them." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. You know, this is a great send off episode for John. So, <laughs> yeah. um, all and right. on, um, on Phoebe, I, I just I really respect someone in AK does this later as well, where like things aren't going away and you've been screwed over and you just kind of say, fuck it. And I, yeah. I just love that Phoebe didn't care. And why should she? Like, people right. saying, like, oh, this is a terrible move. So she's like, you've already all turned on it. What are you going to do? Yeah. Like, screw it. Why not? And she's not sorry, and she just eats all the food and rubs it in their faces. Good for her. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand why they're, like, so pissed off and they were already going to get her out of the game, so. Yeah, she owes them nothing. Yeah. Um, And then, of course, this is, uh, I think David finds his first idol here in mm -hmm. this episode. So, um. Yeah, and then this is where Vakama continues to lose, and we lose John uh, yeah. after Matt has to play his idol because they're splitting on Matt and John, and Flick is approached to make a move, and she does not. <laughs> so Yeah, I'm really confused by Flick in this season. I have very few notes on her, and she was... I just don't really know anything about what she was doing. I mean, she was completely under-edited, but, like, yeah, yeah I don't know what her plans were. Well, no. as we find out next episode is uh, next episode is Flick's first confessional of the season. So that just it just blew my mind. Yeah, that's it's crazy because you have this storyline built in storyline. Her and Brooke uh, have this story and this relationship from season one, one of the most raw, brutal moments in Australian Survivor history. And you're going to completely push 
flick under the rug and just not give her anything is just baffling. And so we don't understand what her thought process is of why she's not making these moves when she's approached for them. I said this for season one as well, just like I feel like she has opportunities to make moves that will actually benefit her and she will either make moves just for the sake of making moves and then not do anything else after to improve her position or she'll just like make horrible moves not even vote the way she should and then she'll blame it on, on other people like she did with christy in season one like she'd blame christy but flick never actually you know she didn't vote the way she should have either so it you know it's not all on christy that you know this plan didn't go forward it was you too <laughs> so yeah and then also just from like a storytelling point of view when especially when they're editing this season knowing how it all plays out and knowing what a big player brook will be in the season it makes sense to give flick something in the story mm -hmm. to make that moment more interesting and exciting and it's already already like so built in um Absolutely. yeah it, like the flick the brook revenge on flick should be a bigger deal uh, for people who've watched all the seasons but because you almost forget Flick's there until the story comes full circle. It doesn't really mean anything. Exactly. So Matt, any, any other thoughts on this episode? Uh, yeah, just, uh, I love Matt, like fucking with Lockie. Uh, Lockie says that he, he played, uh, under 19 soccer. Matt says yeah. the, the, the thing I love about soccer is it's so easy that anyone can play it and you don't get hurt. <laughs> yeah. It's just another example of Matt just being a shit house and just yeah. completely just, just winding Lockie up and knowing that Lockie's got a bit of an ego and that he can really get under his skin and just not caring. I just I, I love that about Matt. Yeah. And then I have two notes about Shawnee. Uh the immunity challenge was the was the late challenge, and she's done that on every one of her seasons, which I found um interesting. And then also Brooke was wearing Shawnee's dress at Tribal and it confused the fuck out of me. <laughs> yeah i i remember brooke like she wears a lot of because i think season one her and al were trading clothes like all the time in that season up until that uh the final seven uh, where they turned on each other and then i guess yeah she's doing that in this season as well with shawnee so like she likes to the women like to trade clothes with each other yeah but is it was just when i see that red dress i think of, of uh, shawnee yeah yeah exactly I so, mean, Brooke pulled it off. That's true. Yeah. Um, all right. So any other thoughts as we lose John here? I I love John, but yeah, I don't yeah. have anything else to say I about him. Else. Yeah, I, I'm fine with him being on the season just as a character. So um I don't think I need to see him play again, but yeah. Um, all right. Episode 10, this is where we will unfortunately say goodbye to Matt Rogers, but uh, this is also the cake shop episode. <laughs> Which I've, I've said this before many times, I would hate to have this as reward. You're you're like 20 days in and you just get all this sweets and chocolates like that, that would just go right through you. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be good. You have Nick yeah, but, and throwing cake everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but, but Phoebe finds the egg clue and I'm sure she'll be able to find the idol. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I did like uh, Nick realizing that he was going last, so that he didn't have he? to be considerate. So he just tears the place to shreds. It's fantastic. Yeah. And then he has a great like uh, moment where he's just like, "Ooh, floor donut!" And he just picks it up and then he just eats it. God. And then he comes back to the tribe and they ask him how he got it on his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love Nick. Um, all right. So is, is this the episode where David uses Phoebe's clue then to get his second idol, or is that not till next episode? That's the uh, next episode. Okay. So yeah. yeah, yeah. In this episode, David's plan is to make Zach his Sith Lord. Yes, which, the Emperor which, Palpatine which, reference. Which, which I enjoyed. Yeah. Oh my bit. <laughs> Uh, then, uh, speaking of locking being uh, competitive, this is where during a challenge he gets mad. So JLP tells him, too bad, you lost. Go back to your tribe. Yes, this is the one where he tries to, like, hold Lee down in the water yeah. in the swimming yeah. challenge. Yeah. yeah. It's it's so funny because, like, JLP actually, like, calling Locky out for that. 
So yeah, and Lucky just sounds like such a child where he's like, Lee did it to me. Yeah, I was I was retaliating. It's just like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So uh then Bakama continues their losing streak. And unfortunately, Matt cannot do anything. Like he tries to get Flick to once again make a move with like him and Harry and Shawnee, and it does not happen and so matt goes out and matt is one of my favorite australian survivor players now as well like i think that he's just a likable villain i think as we brought up when we talked about cvc1 um yeah. and that's unusual to have like a likable villain um and i just i think he's a good player he really just got swap screwed here so he couldn't do anything more yeah. uh, than what he yeah, tried to yeah. do so I am. Um, there's a moment in this episode as well that kind of shows why I rate Harry so much as a player. I think Harry's just fantastic because in this moment he's he's come into this alliance, but he's not really a major part of it. They took yeah. him in, and he does a really selfless thing and says, "Put your vote on me." He, he's willing to yeah. accept the vote as we're going to do this to get Matt out I don't mind you putting your split votes on me and just showing that trust in this new alliance and showing that he's like a good soldier for them um, it's just brilliant by Harry and it's something he does regularly he does, he did it on his first season um, I can't remember which vote it was but in the merge I think it might have been the David Blind side where he was willing to have himself be the yes the second most votes um, and Harry mentioned that on his podcast where Janine said, there's going to be votes coming for you. And Harry said, is it the most votes? She said, no. And he said, that's fine then. And like Harry being willing to put himself in danger in the game for the sake of finding allies that are going to stick with him. Yeah. I, th I think it's, it's really gutsy and it's, it's part of why I love him as a player. Yeah. I mean, he's a great player. I mean, the fact that he's like willing to show how much people can trust him, that he will like, take votes for other people it it just yeah. it's great so um so yeah and any other thoughts on matt rogers going home no goodbye godfather i hope you come back somehow i would love him to play a third time like yeah. that's one where i'm another one where i'm like if you play again i will not be sad like i will be very happy yeah. to see you again and then, play, and then yeah. bring back and then bring uh janine so we can get the godmother and the godfather or, i'm sorry the perfume scorpion sorry the perfume scorpion yes what what, what a uh, captain season that would be i know um, good yeah, um, it just sucks that this happened so soon with Matt. He was he was brilliant on both of his seasons, and he's he's just a fantastic player and so much fun to watch. Um, it was so great to have him back, and if only he made merge because man, how that David and Matt alliance yeah. would have continued or or blown up. Like who knows what would have happened. Well, it just feels like an abrupt end to that alliance because we don't get a conclusion to it. We don't even get like a David reaction. I don't think to Matt being gone. Yeah. So it just another, like, I don't know. There It should have been a reaction from David or something. Just like, I feel like the editors, again, drop storylines when they're no longer convenient or just don't give us any build up to them. So, yeah. We don't also don't really learn how aware that Moana and Jackie and Tarzan were of David's role in all this mm. with Matt. Uh, <laughs> because, like, obviously Moana was Matt's biggest um ally and we see david become the new matt rogers essentially to her game and i'm guessing that has to be because of yeah. she knows about what david did for their group uh, yeah. but we never see it like ultimately right. david ends up turning on his original group in the merge and, and all of his allies are the minority that he was against originally yes um, but we never see anything of that in the story as to how that came to be yeah yep again failure on the editing <laughs> Uh, um all right episode 11 this is again we get another sad uh boot in a row here this is where we get Phoebe going home after David uses her to get his second idol uh or his Iron Man repulsors yeah. <laughs> um, fuck David Man, yeah this one this sucked this one this was a terrible one-two punch of losing Matt and then Phoebe and then Phoebe yeah. gets her idol stolen it's like David fuck you man yeah and David wears it at tribal. 
Like, just, this, and, this, and then you just see Phoebe looking. It's like, wait, 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 what? Yeah. Like this was kind of gross, and it 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 shows the the real ruthlessness of the Golden God. Like he does not care, and I I rate that as a player, and I I, I enjoy him as a player. But man, does it suck! Like like Phoebe gets so screwed over by David here. It's 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 heartbreaking. Yeah. And it sucks. And Nick tries to everything to save her with his extra vote that he can. And they, you know, they realize far too late, unfortunately, that David's not with them. So, um, I just, I, I don't want to like, I, I don't know how hard it is to find an immunity idol. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's way more difficult than yeah. we think as viewers. But I just, yes, there's this big termite mount. I don't understand how there's a, there's a termite mound that, yeah, Phoebe just doesn't search. Like, how does she not find it? I don't know. Like, surely she could have found this thing and how different things would be, but... Yeah. I don't know. I'm just she... sad about Phoebe. Yeah, me yeah. Too. I mean, I don't know if her head wasn't as in the game at that point. Uh, I, I don't know. Because, I mean, we saw her literally in season one use Craig's uh, use Craig searching to be able to find the idol without a clue, right? So, yeah. you know... It's, uh... I think in in her mind, she was trying to rebuild that relationship with David, yeah. which we, we didn't mention. This does all come about because Phoebe, um, you know, votes against David in the in the tribal council before. But um, yeah, yeah. So she was trying to make amends, and by showing him the idle clue and trying to bring him in on it, I, that does make sense. But unfortunately, David, David is a petty man, and he he is set on revenge if you cross him. Yeah, well, and it's just like, I don't know, like, because he was, again, this is another thing, and we'll get to this in a couple episodes with Nick's demise, but, like, I, I just feel like Nick was being branded as a snake, like, by everybody, like, they just did not want him in the game because of the perception that he was this original snake and not someone that can be trusted when uh, Nick is definitely not that type of player that David is actually, so... yeah. And I mean, Nick didn't play that kind of game in this season. No, he was like a, a he was a good ally. He was a a loyal alliance member. He he wasn't that kind of character within the game. Um, right. So yeah, that's just a holdover from his original season. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all works out for David, so it's hard to really uh, you know yeah. question him on these things. But yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a ruthless man. I mean, I think it's also like. David taking out people that have sound strategic minds and keeping people that don't. So, well, I mean, good for him, but it sucks for us. Yeah, exactly. So, anything else to say on this episode with uh, Phoebe going? Please come back, Phoebe. Please come back somehow. Yeah, we yeah. we love I've, the um, as well. Come, come to uh, America, you would dominate. Yeah. Well, because like there's less rounds she has to make it through to get to the merge. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to survive a week and you're already in the final. <laughs> exactly. <several players. laughs> All right. Episode yeah. 12. This is where we get uh, Flick going home, Brooke getting her revenge on the under edited Flick. And uh, so I'm Flick is one in the middle here where, again, we didn't need to care about her, uh, even though we should have. But I didn't like Flick in season one anyway. Uh, just how she played that game and how she would react to things and uh so i i didn't like her here going in either so yeah i got really nothing on this episode besides harry pulling the uh string and then he has he just has this amazing smirk and smile as he finds his uh an advantage yep yep the advantage to cancel a tribal which i think we do want to mention uh, what ended up happening there in the Nick episode ne next episode? Uh, yeah. there's well, well, also in this one, AK stops Harry from uh, yes, from from yeah. playing it because uh, uh, I'm not pissing in your pocket, which is one of my favorite uh, uh, sayings. So, yeah, and I, I want to give credit to AK because at least like AK isn't playing as out like as out in front the as he did the first time because he knows that's what did him in the first time, and here like he's still being like that smart strategist for his alliance and so like i i'm totally on board with ak's game what he was trying to do in this season um obviously i would have preferred to see to see more of what 
uh, was going on with him because, like, you know, I mean, he got decent at it, but, like, I don't know. It, it just sucks because, like, he's not uh, as aggressive as he was the last time, so. Um, but... Uh, all of my notes on this episode are about um, Harry, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Shocking. Um, but I, I just, yeah, I, I really like how Harry sells himself. Like, mm -hmm. When he's in a bad situation, he's very um, logical and he, he, he gives his pitch of why he thinks that he's someone that would be worth moving forward with. But he doesn't like overly push it or he doesn't, you know, he's not begging or he's not, you know, being desperate and acting crazy. He's just he's very rational. He's very logical and he doesn't panic. And I, I think that's a really good quality in a survivor player that when your back's against the wall, you don't really panic. And Harry doesn't ever panic. Um, and I also loved um, how AK handled this. I think standing up and stopping him and kind of selling that, like, I'm with you. And it, it is a bold move to stand up and stop someone from playing yeah. something and being like, this isn't a part of the game. Like, I wouldn't do this. Like, this is too far. You know, I, I wouldn't embarrass you like this like we voted the way we said like everything's good right yep uh any other thoughts on this or on flick no all no. right well episode 13 this is like the nail in the coffin for losing another one of our favorite players and this is where nick will go and with harry's advantage so harry definitely wanted to save nick and apparently what I found out is that production was not telling Harry, like, whether, like, what would happen with the merge and, like, yeah. if the merge would still happen if he canceled the tribal and helped Nick. So yeah. he didn't give it to Nick because he was worried that, like, if there was going to be another challenge after this before merge and he would need it. So Yeah, it, it would essentially just reset everything and they would still have to go to another challenge. Yeah. But, yeah, I think production did... Uh, they later said that it would have been merge after yeah. this, regardless, like the next episode, but Harry didn't know that yet. Which is dumb. I think production should be, you know, clear about what's, you know, what the, I guess, I mean, I, I, I'm i not saying like reveal exactly what the entire plan for the season is, but it just like be clear about the advantage, like at least. So, yeah. and so I, I feel like that really screws Nick here and like screws Harry later on because he doesn't get to yeah. keep his other solid ally in the game. I, um, I did read at uh, here in Harry's deep dive for all stars that this is the one regret he has across his two seasons. Um, he, he does say that he doesn't think it would have changed anything. Essentially the order would have been, pretty much the same as it was uh, mm -hmm. maybe like he bumps up a position or two but um he said that like the dirty harry character like this chaotic player that makes big moves and is that agent for that chaos that that's exactly what harry should do he gives he gives the clue but he played it safe um and that's the one thing he kind of looks back on and goes like yeah i should just give that a nick and just roll the dice yeah yeah and and with nick here like he's obviously very heartbroken i mean i didn't nick like also start his family like around this time too so like he left his family and to do this again i think i heard somewhere that he wasn't even sure that he had wanted to come back at this time because of his family so like it's just yeah so, going, yeah so going back to the auction we get uh, nick getting his phone call from his wife yeah. and his young child so it's, yeah it's like yeah. yeah yeah so it's just heartbreaking and so like his reaction at tribal like hurts a lot because like after he's voted out because he he knew this was coming but it's just like hard in the moment when like you are it actually yeah. happens and so your dream is crushed and to just miss out on merge and jury here yeah um so I, it sucks. Um, Nick is a fantastic character, a fantastic survivor player that just gets the raw end of the deal uh, in his survivor journey. I would love a Nick 3.0, um, but I, I'm sure he probably isn't going to play again. I mean, yeah. it just sounds like he's moved on with his survivor journey and, and life. And yeah. So. Yeah. It, feel, it feels like he loves survivor, but survivor doesn't love him back. Cause he just keeps getting like, you know, like screwed. Yeah. Yeah. 
So. Yeah, Nick Nick is the uh, Dolph Ziggler of, you know, ah. sometimes sometimes the thing you love just doesn't love you back. Oh, man. A... He has so much upside, but then people just keep holding him down. Wow. Yeah. Sure. That, was, that was good. Just just uh, just wait till my comparison a little later. Um, the only other note for this episode I have is this is a challenge I wish US, USA would, would do where the team is building the uh, block towers. And then this is also where Jackie, every time she drops, she gets pissed and she like flings the rope. So it knocks over Zach's tower. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Zach and Jackie storyline of Zach and Jackie hating each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I don't blame Zach. I'd be fucking pissed. Yeah, Jackie was completely in the wrong on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I will agree with that. But it's just funny because I also don't like Zach's. Uh um all right. So uh anything else to say on this episode? Oh, this is the episode where um Harry steals Jackie's clothes and makes oh, a yeah. scarecrow out of um uh, Jackie's I clothes on the beach. I forgot yeah. about that. That's yeah, that's pretty good. But then he then he's a good boy and gives them back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is where we now get to the merge. Um, what should be an exciting time? At least maybe this episode might be one of the most exciting episodes of this post-merge, besides like the other major one that we'll talk about later. But um, this is where David and Zach make it seem like they're going to flip over with Lockie and AK and Brooke and Shoni and Harry. And uh, they do not, and they're going to stay with the Makuta 7. Um, but uh, yeah, this is is this also where Zach's uh, love of birds comes? Yep, yep. And Shawnee uses that and tells Brooke to ask about birds. And then, like, you see Zach's face, he gets so happy, like, to talk yeah. about the birds. It's like, I man, I feel bad for him. It's just like using something somebody loves just to, you know, fuck with them. Yeah, yeah. We we also forgot to talk about the talent show at Makuta with yeah. Nick talked about with Zach with, doing the, with the flamenco yeah that was a good moment yeah so was, I, I do like Zach in the season like he had like a moment to like really redeem himself but then like Sharon pulled out you know because fuck her because she sucks but... yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, I, do, I do think you know like he's not he's never going to be one of my favorite players but in terms yeah. of like a second time player and he certainly improves. Um, yes on the likability oh, factor like 100%. i mean because he's a complete monster in the first season so like i don't know there's there's some upside to zach in this and that's not something we could have said uh when we were discussing his first season oh yeah i, I i'll say i'll agree with that uh to a degree i just i'm just like i still think the tendencies the sexist tendencies are definitely still there oh but sure i mean we're going way back now but on the challenge where they get the newspapers, like the magazine covers. Yes, we've got to mention that yeah. too. Um, Zach's is his comments of his first season, and it cuts to a confessional saying of Zach saying, "I just call them the way I see them." Yeah. So he he does kind of double down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I mean, then we're gonna get uh the uh immunity challenge i'm trying to remember who oh this is oh i have a, I have a big note of this one so during the uh reward challenge lee wins an advantage in this challenge and this is where you're on the seesaw and you have to stack nine blocks but yeah. lee's advantage was just one less it's like what the fuck dude like it should have been two at least because this was this was our challenge and in, yeah. in uh yeah 20 wins. so i have a, a deep dive revelation about this challenge um Shawnee completed this challenge within like two minutes. She oh, just wow. did it. Like so she talks about her Pilates. She like did it so quick. And it was just like we need something. So they kind of like did a bit of fake challenge stuff just to pad it out somewhat. But Shawnee won the challenge like immediately. Um it, it, and they even say later on, Lockie says, I can't believe you did that so quick. Um she she just had no problem with it. You see when she's standing on the board, yeah, like she, she she's so rock solid and she has no issue whatsoever. And it was like, what do we do here? She's just done this challenge in two minutes flat. And she didn't drop any. And I think I, I need to re-listen to it, but I'm sure they said like they just had a bit of like fake drama in there. And then even when you mm-hmm. see Shawnee's dropping, she's kind of like smiling and be like, yeah. Oh, I dropped it. Um, because I think she'd already won immunity by that point. Yeah. Oh. Man, yeah, Queen Shawnee, man. Even going higher in my rankings now. 
Yeah, yeah. Higher than she will already be. <laughs> I, I, I love, it can't go, it can't go much higher, but yeah. she's getting there. <laughs> I love when it comes to Shawnee how like her lifestyle just helps her with certain challenges. Like she has uh, this one where she talks about her Pilates, and then there's the one what? where she's swimming and she talks about how she doggy paddles in the pool and she just oh, yeah, talks well, to her well, yeah, like yeah, we, it's like and she doggy paddles for like two hours. It's like, yeah. what is your life? <laughs> All right, so yeah, then we get to tribal. We get Moana and Locky fighting, um, and just like Locky being very overconfident uh, that David and Zach are with them, and this is where we get Lee's probably best confessional in his Survivor career of uh, time to dethrone the King of Vakama or whatever, um, and we get Locky getting blindsided and becoming the first member of the jury. So. Any thoughts on Lockie here? Uh, my, not on Lockie at first, but um, like is it on David Harry? Played... Is it on Harry? No. Oh. <laughs> um, the way David played this is just perfect, and we're going to get into the the kind of decline on the entertainment factor of the season. But um, like everything David did was perfect for his game, and and how he handled coming into this with a kind of you know, a finger in all pies kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, he played it perfectly. And, and the Lockie Blindsides, yeah, it's an iconic one. And he, I, I actually really like Lockie. I, I think, yeah. you know, the, the big physical play is not usually my, like, favorite player to watch. Um, but I do think Lockie's a good example of that. And I don't think he's just a physical player. He mm -hmm. does have a pretty good read for the game. And he's, he's yes. I think he's a bit more than just your alpha male physical challenge uh, beast. Um, so yeah, I was happy to see Lucky back, and I'm glad he made Jerry. And he was he was a pretty important part of the season. And if we ever end up covering The Bachelor, he he goes on to do that after this. Yes, yes. Uh, going on uh, Lucky about what you said. Yeah, I, I also I also like him. Like each time, he's always brought something. Like one of my favorite moments was in 2017 when he took Jericho for the swim yes. because yeah. because yeah. Jericho yeah. was afraid. It's like just how happy Lucky was to. To, sh to help Jericho get over that, like yeah. that is why I'm always a, a Lockie fan. Although I never see him like going deep, like like really deep into any game. Yeah, I mean he did in his first season. He was final he was five. Yeah. Oh pretty, yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. but, but I never saw yeah. he never had a, he never had a winning path except to win. Uh, out. Is yeah, what, is what he needs to challenge his way through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I will say like I did uh, I did really like Lockie in season two in 2017 because I I do think he had a decent game like at times when he would like what him and Henry and Luke and Jericho were stealing like the jam and the food and whatever and they yeah. blame on Annalise. So like oh, poor Annalise. I'm sorry, Annalise. <laughs> like Lockie has good gameplay in there. Um but yeah I mean when when it gets down to it he definitely needs to win challenges to win the game. But yeah. like you know he's still a good player and I again I'm also happy he was on this season. I think that another no brainer mm -hmm. to be on this cast. So yeah for sure. Um all right, so then... Oh, no. Uh, it's the final wanna... time you can talk about Harry. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk about this episode. Yeah. Okay, well, then let's talk about the next episode, about Lee's mom. Does that make you no, happier? Wanna... Oh, God. I don't want to skip <laughs> over Harry. Yeah, we, okay, need, yeah we, we need to cover this, unfortunately. Episode 15, this is Harry. We know it's Harry's boot episode because we have the same challenge that was at the end of Champions vs. Contenders. Yeah, this is fucking evil. This was evil by the <laughs> yeah. by the production. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So yeah, I mean, uh, who wins the this challenge? Uh, Brooke. Brooke does because yeah. it was Brooke and Lee in the finals. Yeah, I knew Lee was in the finals. I didn't think he won it though. So yeah. So Brooke wins this challenge. <laughs> so it's just sad that Harry loses this again. And then we get to... And he was in the final three again in, yes. in this yeah. challenge. It's like, damn it, man. Yeah. yeah. So then we get to the bonfire twist as well, just like in CVC2 as well. Yeah. And so this is where Harry attempts to get uh, Lee and... Harry, Harry and AK attempt to get Lee and Zach to flip and yeah. vote with them uh against uh jackie right i think so yeah but this is what this is one of michael's favorite moments of harry so i'll let you repeat what he absolutely yeah oh yeah so my my biggest note of this is kind of like henry where um 
I feel like this is a good final episode for Harry, and especially as it's looking, unless he comes back, like it's the end for Harry as a player in general. Um, he goes down swinging, and he has this strat chat with uh, Lee and who was the other one? Zach. Zach. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Zach around the campfire and um, Lee says oh, I'd love to know what Dave thinks about this and Harry just looks at him dead in the eye and says is he your boss or something <laughs> and it, it's so brutal and so cut and, and you know watching I thought there's there's a chance that Lee makes this move and yeah. I think it made sense for him and, and we see that Lee is really kind of traumatised by how badly his final tribal performance went in his first yeah. season that he, he does want to make moves and he doesn't just want to ride the majority so yeah th- th- I think this is a move that made a lot of sense for Lee um, but unfortunately it wasn't to be um, I also have a big um, I, I don't understand Dave in this episode when it comes to Harry I feel like it's Dave just trying to manufacture some kind of reason for TV reasons um, where Dave says he needs to vote out Harry because Harry has played for 80 whatever yes, consecutive exactly days. days. Yeah. Yeah. And if I vote out Harry now, when I get a final tribal council, I'll have the most consecutive days. I don't know if Dave knows what consecutive means. No. I... I... Oh, Harry yeah. I feel... not play I don't... 80... He did I not play he... 80 odd consecutive days. He was voted out on day 49. Yeah. I see the last. Dave... I see. I... I see the logic he's doing just because it, their seasons were back to back. I can yeah. see that logic, but his logic gets worse. So it, it's like so Dave was voted out, so he didn't play consecutively because he didn't play the the yeah. twenty yeah. plus days of yeah, that season he, before he coming back. Only in day thirty one, the first time. Yeah, yeah. So he he didn't. So it just doesn't work. But then also, if you're talking about consecutive days, Sean has played. Sean yeah. is the only one on the cast who has actually played consecutive days because 100. she was never voted out. So she, right. at this point sure. in the game, would have played, what, like 75 consecutive days. Right. So this whole thing about we need to get Harry because of this just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That's good point. Great point. Yeah, I think uh, it's just being petty. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then also, as Harry said, don't forget, he survived to the last day because that tribal council went, it was at 2 a.m. on the last yes. day. So yes. yeah, he, he did, did so. <laughs> um, and also on Harry's way out, he throws his confidence stick in the fire. So yeah, I, and this was like a good. Uh, the, and the way he did that was like, oh man, he's retiring. But yeah, damn it. the end. <laughs> so that was my last note that uh, Harry throws well, his stick. Well, in the fire. well, well, don't forget when uh, uh, JLP is like, does anybody have anything uh, to play? He reaches into his bag and pulls out all the bananas. Yeah, <laughs> that he stole. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to miss there. I really want him to come back. Yeah. yeah. I also had another note on Harry that I think Harry is at his best at Tribal Council. I feel like so many play, so often Tribal Council is kind of a bit pointless where because no one really wants to say anything and everyone's being really cagey. And I feel like Harry's one of those few players that really uses Tribal Council to like push people into answers and he'll, he'll be quite confrontational and open. Um, and yeah, he, he's always at his best at tribal council. I mean, it makes sense that's where Dirty Harry was born, and yeah, this is where Dirty Harry dies. Yep, unfortunately. So, uh, now we get to probably the saddest episode in Survivor history. Um, unfortunately, this is where Lee has to leave yeah. the game, uh, because of his mother, which is just so depressing and like i yeah i i wish they didn't show as much footage of him reacting because i was like crying it's like and then tarzan just comes in and comforts comforts him it's like that i didn't mind just like but there is at least like like almost a whole minute of him just like reacting afterwards yeah it's like like, don't do that well and it's just like it feels so sad because like the fact that you know they're out there for like 50 days like they so much can happen back home and just like this how horrifying it is to to leave your home and be like you know is it going to be hopefully it's the same when you get back and just yeah it just sucks yeah i i have like mixed feelings on this episode i there's part of me that thinks none of everything that's in this episode must have been approved by lee i I don't believe that they would have shown all this stuff without Lee given his kind of approval of it. 
yes. I would like to think anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- this this is just brutal, and it's 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 so heartbreaking. I cried watching it. It's it's just, yeah. you know, I it's an entertainment show. I don't want to see someone grieving, yeah, for the loss of their mother. You know, at, at the same time, you're you're telling a story, and you can't just have one of your players just disappear without any real. Yeah. You know, explanation, but I do think it may be tipped over into a bit, I don't know, exploitative. I, I yeah, it, it felt a, a bit too much of using someone's real grief for the drama of your story. And I don't know, I had mixed feelings about it, and it was yeah. heartbreaking. And everyone's reaction, like Tarzan, yeah. got me. Also, I we have Harry and Lockie coming into tribal council with mustaches that they've shaved yeah. and they're all happy and they've clearly thought oh, it'll be funny we'll come in with mustaches at least give give them some the, warning the yeah jury, yeah the jury a warning of what's happened here because there's this really awkward moment where they come in like happy and being like hey look we've got silly <laughs> mustaches look at us, yeah. and then it's like it's like oh there's been some news from home lee's had to move from the get uh, leave the game and yeah, yeah i just think they could have at least give them a heads up about that yeah i agree and it's and to Lee, I want to give Lee credit in the fact that he's also never been voted out of yeah. this point. Only one of two people in an Australian survivor. With yeah. him and Sharn, yeah. And yeah. so um, I I don't know how much farther Lee would have made it. I think based on how it was going, Lee probably makes it through like a few more rounds before he's even considered a target because he is so such a loyal player and like – um, I mean, we don't know. We don't know if he would have actually tried to make a move at some point and redeem himself uh, from his mistakes. So it just sucks. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd be okay with the Lee 3.0 maybe um, because I'd like to see him actually get to finish. Um, yeah. But I'm sure yeah. at this point. If, it, yeah. If he wants to come back, I think he should get, he should be uh, allowed to come back. Yeah. Uh, what I, I want to say one good thing. Uh, one thing that I did come out of this is that David and Lee teamed up to do the towel challenge, uh, where they took a bunch of photos, like with towels, with like a bunch of Australian stars. And I've seen some. If if you're into that, I I, I would I would suggest look at it because it's like now I know why David is a model. He's yeah. very attractive. Yeah. I mean that's very obvious. Yeah, he's an attractive <laughs> man. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, but. But some good things about this uh, episode, so we can, uh, is my note for Shawnee is she builds bond, bonds with uh, Tarzan, and then it gets custody to her conventional, and she's like, wow, ooh. Yeah. Which is uses that. This is the uh, reward challenge with the mud basketball, and Sharn yeah. does the over the uh, over the back no look uh, hit. And then this is where we get letters from home, where David gets a letter from Lukey. Yes, so where Luke randomly tells him that his dog dies, but he doesn't know if he has even has a dog. So he just yeah, that locked. that's a great uh, deleted scene. I wish they would put it in the episode because yeah. because because David gets all emotional, and so does everybody else, and then he just keeps ringing. It's like ah, son of a bitch, and then it's like uh, your dog didn't really die, but don't tell the other players. I was trying to get you sympathy. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's so good. Well, and especially to like mention luke in this season because he is one of your other greatest players of all time and like the you know obviously luke wasn't going to play a third time right after playing a second time so like yeah. um it would have been nice to acknowledge luke in this season at least though so yeah uh, sure. but now we get to the beginning of the exile twist which i'm sure was impacted yeah. by lee leaving the game um and uh, I get that they have to have another non-elimination in there. I don't know how much like this was just thrown together last minute at this point, but uh, it just is a weird twist. And this is where uh, this is where AK, Brooke, and Moana get sent to exile uh, because they're the three that get the most votes. Yeah, this is a very convoluted twist. Like, yes. This is like way too much. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I I basically have nothing on the next three episodes. Other yeah. than it just it it goes on for way too long, and yeah. um, my only note is that when AK is a tribal council, he's got Harry's confidence stick in, so he like I don't know has a little memento to his ally there. Yeah, yeah, um, and then I mean I guess I didn't just mention what happens in the next couple episodes. 
Uh, so then episode 17, then Shoney. Oh, well, I guess we should talk about this a little. So it's Shoney, Jackie, and Zach that go to exile next, but David is in contention and David ends up pretending that he's sick to, yeah. <laughs> to not be sent there. And he also gets Zach to fall on his sword for him. So like, this is great gameplay by David. Um, this is another one of his greatest moves, I would say. Yeah. Uh, because like he made it so that he wasn't in contention to get voted out next at all. So I, I do think David was genuinely like not in the best of health. Right. But he definitely plays it up um yeah. and tries to use that to get it um out going to exile. And there's also this fantastic kind of uh, confessional for me, okay, when Zach comes where he's like, if it's such a good move, why didn't David do it? when he's like talking about how this is a great move that I came to exile by my own choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just wild um, that this even, and like Sharn and Moana at this point are talking about, should they take David out and they don't do it? So. Yeah. Uh, my only note for this episode is this was airing during the pandemic and David was coughing a lot during tribal. So I, I wonder like what it's like, cause I was thinking it's like, I wonder what it was like watching this in 2020. Like, we're yeah. just coughing a lot. Yeah. yeah. David was patient zero. Maybe. Jeez. Yeah, but I, I love that how much he is coughing to, like, play it up. And it's just like... <laughs> and he does it, like, so fake, too. It's, like... it's so funny. Um. All right. And then episode 18. So then it comes down to uh, basically it's AK Shoney or Zach going because they're the ones who lose all the heats. And this is where Jackie is going to make her one move of the game. And she is going to flip on the split vote and blindside Zach. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, as we said, Zach had some redeeming factors his second time, but like... I, I don't know. I mean, again, I don't, he shouldn't have been on the season in the first place, but uh, yeah. And any other thoughts here on Zach's final moment? Uh, I, I think it's kind of fitting that he, he goes into this exile and ultimately ends up in the bottom pool of people that can be voted for, um, despite yeah. being this big challenge threat. And yeah, Shani, right. who he was very vocal about being weak in the first season, uh, makes it out of that. Yeah, uh, and then the the last challenge to get back into the game is is, is holding weights with his arm. So you, so you would think you'd be really good, but nope, Jackie beats him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, Jackie beats him, not Shani. Shani yeah. doesn't. Yeah, that kind of yeah, really yeah, my point a little bit. <laughs> yep. So, um, then uh, we're gonna. I mean, do we have any other thoughts on Zach before I move on? Nah, no. I, think we, I think we can. Uh, well, it ties into the next episode where everybody takes credit for this move. Yes, everybody does take credit. David's pissed at Jackie, though. I mean, we're we're gonna get into it now, where uh, David wants his petty revenge on Jackie now for doing this, and so we're gonna get to this final eight round uh, where it almost goes to rocks. Uh, Sharn manages to convince everybody to like AK Brooke and Shawnee to be willing to flip on Jackie and yeah. AK was AK, AK wanted to go rock so bad. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then we also get David playing one of his idols. He plays on Tarzan, which is also actually a good move because you're gonna solidify yeah. Tarzan being an ally for you moving forward. But before also, he plays it, oh I was gonna say before he plays that we get the awesome confessional of all of his idols. His two idols, his yeah. MUA necklace yeah. and his fake idol. Yep, yep. Also with the threat of rocks like taking someone out of that pool, um, is just a smart play because it comes down to it that it's the three on the minority plus Sean that are the only options that can go in the case of a rock vote. Whereas if Tarzan's in that mix as well without the idol, you know, maybe things change with that. So I think I think it's good to kind of put the percentages in your favor as much as you possibly can. Oh, I, I, absolutely. So like it, it just at this point, it puts it where it's a 75% chance that the minority three mm -hmm. are now going to be the ones drawing rocks. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's it was a great, it was just a great move in general. Um, and that kind of probably factors in as well as Sharn <laughs> convincing them that she's going to be with them. So, which I mean, yeah. I understand why they 
think that Sharn's going to be with them because for her, it, may, it would make sense to get rid of David. But <laughs> so, and, did, any thoughts? Did it have to be unanimous on across everybody to knock all the rocks? Yes. 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 Yeah. So, okay, because yeah. AK wanted to, but then, the, but then Brooke and Shawnee uh, leave Sharn so they convinced AK to. Yeah. I, I liked how, um like, dead set AK was on it. And I think AK is right in this situation yeah. where yeah. Yeah. like you're you're just playing for one extra position. This is yeah. your chance to to make a move that can actually give you a majority. Um like roll the dice, see what happens. And yeah, they probably should have just went for it. But they I, I think they they understood the logic of Sean doing this would be game suicide if she didn't intend on following through. Yeah. But unfortunately, that Sean didn't see it that way. Yeah, I I don't understand like Sean making these fake promises that she's then going to go back on and claim she was doing what was like the the what was with the most integrity and whatnot. Like it's just a terrible decision on her part to do this. Yeah. So I mean, if she does it, she has to then commit to it because yeah. then it's a good move. Right. Like then she actually it becomes a move that she made that she can actually mm -hmm. claim a tribal final tribal. And I think it would be looked at as a really, you know, positive thing that she did in her game. But yeah. by like flipping back and forth, she loses everybody. It's just yeah. a complete disaster for her. Yeah, absolute disaster. So any thoughts on Jackie before we move on to Sean making mistakes? Um I no, I'm good. She got more time than she deserved. I think I think I think we're good. Yeah, we know about her bodybuilding routine now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was stack. <laughs> I think it was funny watching her walk around the beach in David's clothes thinking yeah. she was the new, new golden god, but yeah. I think everybody this season was doing was, yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> well, when you when it's when it's the golden god's clothes, I don't blame him. So yeah, true. <laughs> All right. So episode 20, this is where Sharn makes the mistake after she has promised these three that she will vote with them and that she's going to take David out. She says now that she wants to take David to the end, which is, I don't really understand. N none of the audience understood this. Well, she didn't just say that. She said, this is her quote, David is my shield in this game and I'm going to take him to the end. What? Yeah. I think, you, I think she missed like one step there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All well, right. This, so part of this episode is David kind of strong arm Sean and uh, rejoined by showing her the idol. Um, so it kind of scares her out of making the move. But to me, that would solidify if I was Sean that you do put your vote on David yep. because either he doesn't play the idol, you take out the biggest threat in the game and you've proved your loyalty to these three that you said you were going to do it. Or he does play his idol and you still have the trust of the three in the minor, or soon to be two, if David plays the idol. Um, and you can say to David, like, oh, you said you're going to play your idol, but I thought I'd keep trust with this minority. Like, she could play it off like that. I, I feel like her best bet there is to put the vote on David, and it would have ended up with David going. Right. And this is crazy, too. He does not play his idol. He has the balls to not do yeah. it again after this after he didn't play his idol last season and got voted out with it in his pocket. And this is just the craziest thing that he does that again <laughs> and, and survive. Yeah. He's a golden guy. I, yeah. There, there, there must be something in the Sean relationship that we didn't see where he, yeah. he was a hundred percent sure she was voting with him, but yeah, yeah. To, to, to know that you're getting three votes in a final uh, seven. Yeah. Is and not play your idol is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yep, and this is where we lose Queen Shawnee, unfortunately, and <laughs> she does give the death stare to Sharn on her way out, which is funny. Yeah. So, any anything else to say on Shawnee? I mean, we'll talk about her again in a few weeks, luckily, with Heroes yeah. vs. Villains. So. Uh, last time, uh, Michael said that Shawnee was like the Shawn Michaels of, of the Rockers. Uh, because we left Fenella behind, so this time I think she's the Shawn Michaels of the Click, where where everybody else just kind of leaves and like she's just there. And then and Heroes versus Villains it is her uh, DX time, where she's just causing chaos with, with the new up and comer. <laughs> yeah, well, I I can't, I can't wait for her fourth season where she comes out of retirement, um, and it's the crown jewel, Shawnee. 
Oh, no, no, not that it. one. No. Well, first we have to get to where uh, now she's all faith based and she's kind because she did, she did just have a baby. So I can see that. Yeah. Then she retires and then it's going to be the crown jewel. one. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we get to see Shawnee past that, but uh, we'll talk about her more in Heroes versus Felons first. And yeah. Again. One last one last thing on this uh, episode, so we can uh, wrap up. Is this is when the cow comes in, uh, to the camp, and then Brooke and Shawnee have my favorite moment of maybe it could be a new alliance member. Who are you? Who are you voting for? Mo. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, Shawnee's fantastic. It's it's um. She delivers every time she's on screen, and I'm glad you made it far into the game again. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, all right. So in episode 21, AK and Brooke know they're screwed. Uh, you get Brooke winning immunity, so AK knows he's double screwed. Yeah. Uh, you also have him overcoming his fear of heights in this challenge. A great, yeah. mo- a great, a great moment, especially because yeah. Brooke is still cheering him on, even though yes. she's like doing the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I am. Um, I really love AK in this episode where he just he's so done with these people where he just he's getting tagged by Mo and he's looking for an idol and he just tips the water well yes, over. Yeah. And just like, he just looks it over, yeah. It's so just good. Who, who gives a shit attitude? It's it's fantastic. And yeah, why not? You you're so at the bottom, you're so obviously going, like screw it. Yeah. Well, and so then we get the twist where uh, someone can just volunteer to go to fire instead of going to a vote against yeah. anyone they want. Which I mean, I feel like production had to add this because they knew what was going on. It's yeah. like this is this is the only time this has ever been used. Obviously, AK is going to choose this, so he at least has a shot. Yep. Yep. So he goes up against Moana. I mean, everybody wanted AK to win this so we could yeah. see Moana go, but AK yeah. unfortunately loses and is out of the game. Um, so, you know, I, I loved AK coming back and, you know, improving about what like screwed him the last time of like, I mean, I think he was kind of swap screwed the first time as well, Mm -hmm. but, and Tara not going home. Going home. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, he knew that he couldn't be out in front like the whole game anymore. Um, and so he tried to be more low key and just be like this loyal strategist to his alliance and it it could have worked like AK probably could have won this game uh, if he was able to articulate like his more subtle moves in this game, which I think he could have done. So I'm um, very happy with him uh, getting some sort of redemption in this and being able to make it to jury this time. Yeah. I love AK. So it was good to see him back. I'm glad he did so well. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't mind seeing him a third time for him, but again, I don't know what his thoughts on coming back again are. So, well, uh, on cameo, he tries he charges one thousand dollars if anybody wants a cameo from him, which really? is, is is actually hilarious because people have done it. So it's like, I don't want to do this, but somebody's gonna pay me a thousand dollars. Fuck yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, he is a wedding DJ, so I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, we get to episode 22, and this is where Brooke is going. She's won, what, like three in a row at this point now. Um, And so she's going to win immunity yet again. And this is where uh, David is going to have to sacrifice one of his allies. He has another idol. He's going to play it for himself, and they're going to sacrifice Tarzan uh, after uh tarzan has basically said how great like he gets emotional over wanting to take david to the end and uh i i love tarzan as a person i actually liked him as a character in season two for his four episodes um i thought he had some great confessionals in that season as well and obviously like the whole dichotomy between him and jericho in that season um but it's just like here it's just like he just didn't do much for me and either character wise and obviously not gameplay wise because that's not who tarzan is but it just i don't know what like why production wanted cast so many passive players in this season and so i think they wanted tarzan back because he was one of the most popular yeah uh, players so that i i don't blame it but i mean mo's mo and jack are mo well definitely mo mo's the one that is just the biggest question mark yeah, well, I, I think it must have just been like the fact that these they brought those two back and then those three are aligning together. Yeah, yeah. So. It, it, it is a charisma vacuum. And then you have David, who's like, he sucks it all up. Yeah, just like in space balls with the giant vacuum. Yeah. I, I, I do enjoy Tarzan as a person. I think I think he's 
he does bring something, but yeah, he he's he doesn't have any game, so it's just he finds his people and he sticks with them. That's basically it. My only note on this episode was uh, the funny scene where David's meditating and Sean just sneaks up on him. <laughs> oh, like, sorry, inter- sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I wanted to wait until you were done. Well, why didn't you? <laughs> We've got so much time on this show. Just <laughs> yeah. wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so Tarzan goes here um, and JLP comments about how he made it much further than last time. <laughs> which is true 21st place to fifth place so mm-hmm. uh he so he improved his record so he had the highest like differential and then yeah. i think mark takes it next time when mark comes and then i think yeah. mark beats mark either ties him or or, or beats him yeah because it was what, he, he, he definitely days. beats him <laughs> yeah it was no, what, well, 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 I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I know what you mean uh, yeah, okay, okay yeah that 16 places for Tarzan, and then I believe what Mark got 18th to first, so 17. 17, places. yeah, yeah. So, yep. All right. Um, so now we're gonna get to episode 23, and this is like this moment of we get to it's gonna be Brooke or David, like basically whoever wins this challenge is gonna send the yep. other one home, basically. Yeah um Mm -hmm. and so david wins this challenge and it's this big emotional moment of like brooke knowing she's going home and uh is this also where like is this also the tribal where like brooke just doesn't care so she's also just being like um when david is talking about how like a loyal line stuck together and she does makes the comment of like I don't know if it's like loser or like whatever i'm trying to remember loser say what or whatever she does Yeah, I can't remember it's, what it was. It's just not them not caring anymore. Like they've, yeah. she's done everything she can. It's kind of yeah. the same thing two seasons in a row where it, it the final four comes down to like Harry or Luke and like whoever hmm. doesn't have the the necklace is gone. And then here it's it's Brooke or David. Um, my only note on this was this was a challenge where GLP insanely says that David is busting a nut. Oh, yeah, we need to lot. bring that up. We forgot to. So he says that with Lockie earlier in the season with the coconuts. Uh, Lockie yeah, busts yeah. nut after nut. And then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. JLP loves the his uh, puns. He's the, gonna the man be stopped. He's gonna say it more in Heroes versus Villains. I know. Yeah. That. So, yeah, he he just loves it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So anything to say on Brooke here as she uh, goes out? Nah, and... uh, she. She made a decent pitch of I can beat Dave for the final immunity, yes. which yeah. that's the only thing she can really pitch. So, right. Yeah. I mean, that's right. good for her, but it just sucks that she went home. And then I think this was the episode while it was airing live. They announced Lockie was was next bachelor. So, th- so the people realized, oh, yeah, Brooke and Lockie it didn't go any, f- any further. Oops. Yeah. We forgot to mention yeah. oh, their little bachelor game earlier in the season with AK being yeah. host. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> I um I I really like this moment. I, I do think in this season it's there's a lot of fitting endings to players. Like the episode kind of really is a fitting goodbye to them. And I do like in that immunity challenge where David gets the win, where uh, I think Sean says you're the best female like physical player in the game, and David says like you don't need the word female in there. Yes, yeah. you're the be- yeah. you're the best physical player, and, and I think that's. That's very true. I think uh, Brooke is like the challenge beast of all challenge beasts of um, Australian Survivor. She's she's just the best. Yeah, and, yeah. And nobody's really being. I uh, maybe if Liz did more, but that's just. But but that's it. But Brooke is yeah. definitely number one. Yeah, she she tied the record, I believe, of five immunity yeah. wins for U.S. Survivor. So she, you know, Brooke is the first woman to do that, which is cool. Um, yeah, Brooke the beast. I, I love her a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope she comes back. But 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 like every woman in Australia, apparently, she just had a baby. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Brooke is great. So yeah, I hope uh Australia versus the world, maybe, but we'll see. Uh um, oh, she would you can mean she would dominate that in oh, only 14 yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she, she, every immunity. Yeah, she, <laughs> she'll, she'll be in peak physical condition. Yeah. All right, so now we get to our finale, and this is the uh, kind of hand on a hard idol kind of thing, but they're like holding on to yeah. like the ropes and um and on like the rock wall or whatever. 
So this is where uh, Moana drops out pretty quickly and it's down to David and Sharn and Sharn slips and David wins the final immunity solidifying. Oh, thank, thank God. Can you imagine if he <laughs> lost this? How bad the season would have ended? And so Moana yeah. and Sharn is the final two. <laughs> So yeah, when I when I watched this episode, I, I think it might be the most nervous I've been watching an episode of Survivor because it's like we talked about in the previous season where like I was I was rooting for Harry, I was I was rooting for Luke, but like I respected Pia a lot in her game. And so it wasn't like I was had no investment whatsoever in in Final Tribal when it came around to it. This if David goes out at final three here, I mean, I don't know if I would have finished I, I might have just turned it off. Because I wouldn't have cared, yeah. And um, I and I felt like God for the All Star season to come down to Moana versus um Sean would have just been, it's so depressing and just it's such a letdown. So like I know this has problems in the merge, but I think the fact that David does come out to win it, at least it was worth it that yeah. this big player did win the All Star yeah. season. I will I will agree with that. Like um. Totally. Uh, I mean, anything else to say on Moana before we hit the final tribal? Um, no, I think we can just hit the final tribal because we've okay. been going. We've been going pretty long. So. Yeah. Yeah. But... Bye. Bye. Bye, Mo. Okay. So final tribal. So really, the biggest thing of note here. So Zach and Jackie apparently don't get anything here <laughs> to say. And uh, really, the biggest final tribal I think that I love is uh, AK's question to Sharn of just like with the bag. Yeah. Um, so that was my favorite question and just like Sharn again just like a cannot argue her case to save her life and b i mean she she just poorly managed this jury this is another time again like we discussed in cvc1 um just like poorly managing your jury and just like she absolutely did that yeah. when like the final seven came around and she broke that promise with them and I, yeah, I, I'm again. I'm just so happy David ended up winning. That yeah, like, yeah, it just made it all worth it. So I mean, yeah. Sh Sean was completely screwed from that moment on with the um the Rock Tribal Council. There was just yeah. no way back from that. Um, yeah. but I mean, this was just a complete whitewash. David was. This is where David. So in his deep dive, he said that one of the mistakes he made in his first season was that who he was in confessionals was also who he was in camp. Mm -hmm. So coming into this season he saved all of that game stuff mm -hmm. for his confessionals. He didn't yeah. bring that stuff into camp. So people weren't really aware of how much of a big game he was playing. So he gets to come out and have this moment of final tribal council where he's just like, I was the mole. He just goes through everything that he did throughout his game. And I mean, what can Sean say against it? What, like, what can she possibly say? There's nothing. It's just done. Like he's, it's, it's, he's the obvious winner. Yeah. And yet he gave a bad performance, but like, against anyone i i think I, brooke versus david would have been interesting and that would have been the yeah. only kind of i don't know you could have an actual back and forth yeah um yeah. but yeah this was just sean had no chance yeah my only know is that sean is a lawyer but she's more like lionel hutz from the simpsons she's not, <laughs> uh, she's not a good lawyer <laughs> uh yeah no i on the brook point too i i wanted to say that probably it was a five to four vote and as opposed to what yeah. this ends up being with being an eight to one <laughs> yeah and then yeah. mo and then mo votes for sharn after mo asked uh david the most important question did you take me out because i played a bigger game than you david it's just so dumb i like i like and what's he meant to say yeah it's, uh, it's such a, it's such uh, yeah. a <laughs> Yeah. It's such a layup. It's so easy. It's like, yes, I was so threatened by you more. Yeah, he's not getting Moana's vote. So it's like, this is just how it goes. And Moana's bitter that she lost because she sucks. So, <laughs> um, all right. So now uh, we'll get to, uh, we do we have our winner rankings and then we'll do our player. Uh, it, I mean, the winner rankings, I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Where he's going. No, number three, number three. Yeah. <laughs> Is, he, is David better than Shane, do we think? <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I think David's going to be number one throughout this entire thing. So then it just gets interesting when we get to two and three. Like, yes. like how, how, how we do that. That's where we're going to argue, I think, the most. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. So Golden God, number one, Pia, number two, Jericho, three, Christy, four, Shane, Gold, five. So yeah. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, player awards, favorite player of the season. I mean, I'm between David, Harry, and Nick. I guess I have to, I don't know. I mean, I guess I have to go with David because this is his season, but like, I love Harry and Nick as well. So, yeah, I mean, David had all the fun confessionals. Like, I enjoyed every confessional he had, yes. so I'm playing him as my favorite. Although, I'll do an honorable mention to Phoebe because she's like my oh, yeah. all time favorite player, but she just didn't get that much here, right? Yeah. Right. And there's so many players on the season that I absolutely love. Uh, you know, Michelle. I've yeah, about, I, I've I've talked about Harry a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, David for sure. It, it, this is David coming in as one of, if not the biggest targets in the game, um, and not playing a quiet game, like really yeah. dominating the game. I I just don't know how he did it. I, I it's it's yeah. baffling to me. And yeah, it's it's he- David all the way. He's what I always think like like returning his favorite players want to do. They take their first game and then make the right corrections and then play like a great game. Whereas yeah. most people just just never make like the right corrections. David definitely did that. Like he toned yeah. everything down that needed to be toned down and worked on the social game. So yeah. This was like the equivalent of um David doing what Tony did between um game changes of Men of the War. Um where he just irons out all the flaws in his game and he's just an unstoppable beast. I I just yeah, I rate David so much. Yeah, for sure. Um all right, so then we have our least favorite. Uh um I was between Zach and Moana, but Zach at least got redeeming factor. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with Moana. I'm going Moana, yeah. I'm going Moana. Because I, I think I liked like everybody else at least doing something. Yeah. So oh this is this is really bad because I, I picked more on the on the last season we did as well. I don't want it to sound personal, but yeah, Moana just irritated me in this season. Um yeah, I, I didn't really enjoy anything she brought. Right. Yep. All right. Best move. I'm going the daisy blind side. It's just insane that that ended up working out and David still like wins the game and it's just, you know, because it just went so perfectly. So yeah, I'm going daisy blind side. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that's like the number one. I mean, it's like you. Well, why do you always get to go first, Jake? Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like now we're just copying you, uh, Michael. Go. I'll try to find something different. I mean, it's it's the Daisy Blind Side. It's 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 one of the greatest moves of all time. It's so intricate as well. There's so many moving parts. It's um, yeah, it's one of the best episodes of Survivor. Period. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just is. I'd love to try and think of something else, but I, I yeah. really can't. Uh, I think it's Matt playing the idol for Jackie, which is also a part of the Stacey Blind side play. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's definitely, yeah, it's one of the best moments. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the next couple seasons, I think we might get some differentiation up until Heroes versus Villains, and then that will probably have a defining one, and then Titans versus Rebels. Titans versus Rebels, it could be a lot of different things. It could be yeah. some different things. Yeah. So... All right, let's get to our season rankings. So for Australian Survivor All Stars, so so the lowest ranking the Australian seasons com- with the U.S. seasons combined in their uh, number thirty is Champions versus Contenders one. The U.S. All Stars is right below that. So I think I'm gonna kind of compare it to those um, because I think like it just ended up being kind of a dull season despite some very big shining stars. I will say I probably enjoy this the highs of this season i think are better than any of the highs in the u.s all-stars so i'd probably put it over that uh and uh then it's kind of i it's kind of between cvc one and all-stars for like do you want to put this above that or are we like putting i think so i'm looking at the list right now so i don't think this is this is better than 2017 then we have 2016 right below that, but then we have Australian Outback, Exile Island, and Borneo. So mm-hmm. I think it's better. To, I think it's better than so, Bor- uh, Borneo. Oh. To me, t- to me, I put this just but behind 2017. That would be yeah. where I would place it. But um, I don't have the list to hand. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but I would put it probably below 2016. But I don't want like three seasons in a row. So, but I, I I like this better than Australian Outback. Yeah, probably. Little, I. I, I Below 2016, you think? I I don't know if I put that above 2016 just because I feel like I enjoyed. So I feel like, but I mean, 2016 had some pretty big lows. As no, I, I think you're telling me, Michael. All you, you just said was really, uh, but I, I, just thinking about it, it's like 
this had this had the daisy blind side like this all, big, all big moment like and like like that creamer the, the pre-merge of this one is really good so yeah i, I think i'll put it above 2016 i i uh, think I, um, I, I can't put it but 27 i think this season like it's really propped up by an amazing group of players like there's so many players that are like legitimate all-stars that do deliver yes. and yes there's there's a long portion in the merge where it's very predictable but i i think when you compare this cast to the 2016 cast i i i don't even think it's close personally no i, no, I think that's fair yeah, yeah I, think I, I, I think up to, above 26 because my analysis of this was i wanted to give it a comparison so i picked a movie Maybe it's Twilight. No, it's not Twilight. Uh, I would I would do it like Hancock, the movie, where oh, it's yeah. a great it is a great idea. Starts off really good, mm -hmm. then there's a convoluted twist, like in the third act, and then it just like peters out, and then it's only carried just because its star is like really likable. So yeah, I would say this is like Hancock because my hot take also is that naming a season All Stars is doomed to fail. Whereas if you if you name it Heroes versus Villains or Winners at War or Fans versus Favorites or something like 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 that. Like you'll enjoy it more because all stars you just automatically think everybody has to be an all star as was proven on this season. No, yeah. The only thing worse that you can name it is game changers. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I made sure not to. I made sure not to mention that one. Yeah, because like, like some of those are they really game changers? No. no. Yeah, no. I I would agree, and so I it's just like, do I enjoy? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say maybe Panama Exile Island is, is the one that I may argue in terms of character, but it just in terms of big moments, yeah, I, I could, I, I'll, I'll put this above 2016, below 2017, I think that's fair. So, so what number in the overall rankings would that be? 26, that would, I think. 26, yep. I, yeah, this isn't something I'm going to like super yeah. bad for, but I think that's fair. I, especially comparing against Australian seasons. I, th I think that's a fair placement for it. Yeah, I just feel like we got crippled, Michael, coming in because 2016 and 2017 were so close. It's like, it's hard to put put like some of these above that. And yeah. then because yeah. the, that, next we have Brains versus Braun. Like, I don't know where that's going to go, but then Blood versus Water, I can see going below Champions versus Contenders 1. But then, yeah. you know, it's like Brains versus Braun is also going to be like in this grouping of like six. Yeah, I think Brains versus Brawn is probably going to go around this group, and I think that is going to get screwed by a lot of twists. Um, so, but I mean, we'll get to that in a couple weeks. But uh, I think, yeah, that's that's the end of what we have there. So, well, the, well, well, that's in a couple weeks. What are we doing next week, Jake? Oh, yeah. So next week we have we will have an interview with a player that played in Surv Australian Survivor Brains versus Brawn um so we won't reveal who that is uh for a couple more days but uh we are hopefully excited to announce that uh probably sunday uh, monday probably probably monday, sunday, monday. Sunday. Yeah. yeah yeah we can do that um and we might also have a player from titans versus rebels as well um so uh we'll announce those and uh hopefully and uh, then uh, take a week off of our season reviews and talk about Brains versus Braun the following week, hopefully. And uh, yeah, then we'll see what happens from there with our Australian Survivor interviews and coverage. So um, yeah, any anything else you guys want to say before we sign off? No, I just can't believe that we talked for almost two and a half hours about All Stars. Because that pre-merge is definitely worth it, but the week of got some time there <laughs> yeah. at the merge. I mean, yeah. we did skip like three episodes. Oh but yeah. yeah, it was it was fun to go through this season. I do think there's a lot of highs in this season's but this season, but it is also full of some devastating lows. Um, and I'm very excited to talk to some Survivor players again soon. So that's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for for our next review of Brains versus Braun because Michael won't won't be able to have all of his notes about Harry. So it's going to be very interesting. We'll have all of our notes about George instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Yep. So yeah, we will see you all next time on the tribe of nerds.